what you got from um, Schoolhouse Rock, um, so, but uh, to try to go in, into that. And so part, part of that was to identify certain points when you have a good opportunity to impact the legislative process. So one of the, so I'm just so right now I'm just recapping on that. So one of them is one, the only place we have a, a, a possibility to impact the legislative process is during I, I'm going to say like November and December of of a even numbered year. So like November and December of 2016 or November and de December of 2018. Because what's going to happen? Because it's after the election. And so now you've got a guy who's going to be in there for the next two years, and it's right on the verge of, it, th that's when the deadlines are to get bills turned in for the, the odd-numbered year sessions. So every odd-numbered year we have a long session there. During the long sessions, we get unlimited number of bills that we can do. So if you were to come to me, let's say, it's too late to come to me in December of 2016. But let's say you were to come to me in December of 2018 and say, hey, Nierman, I got an idea for a bill. I think we should make the speed limit 90 on I-5 or something like that. Then, And I might think that's a good idea or I might think that's a bad idea. But I, I'd say, yeah, I can do that bill. I'll write, I'll have that bill written up, whatever, go through the process and get that bill written up. And we can do that because I've got unlimited bills to introduce into the, the session that starts in January that goes to July, the long session there. If you talk to me some other time, like let's say you were to come up to me right now, and say, hey, Nierman, I got an idea. Let's make the speed limit 90 on I-5. I'm going to say, well, you know, so let's say I think it's a good idea. So now I don't really have an opportunity to introduce that bill. I mean, I could, but I get two bills in the short session. And so you're going to use up one of my two bills. So it better be a pretty good bill. It better be something that I can really um, get my heart and my mind around. And the short, this, the, the long session is for actually doing legislation and solving the problems of the state of Oregon. The short session is for screwing your opponents and be doing political maneuvers. And so um, I'm saying, well, making the speed limit 90 miles an hour, that doesn't really screw Tina Kotek or anything like that. So uh, I, that doesn't really do me any good, you know. So, uh, I'm, uh, so, I, uh, so I'm saying, well, I don't know about that, you know. And then plus, it's just going to use up one of my two bills there. And most of the bills that are going to be suggested are going to be bills that don't really go that go anywhere. And so... Um, why would I want to use up one of my two bills to, to do that? So that's a little bit of a harder lift there. So you only so, get two bills in there, right? Two, two bills oh, during the, short, for the short session, short session. there. Oh. So, so in, uh, in uh, February and a little bit of March, we'll have a short session in, uh, in the legislature coming up. And I get two bills on that. But then in 2019, assuming I get reelected, I've got to go a little back and get reelected in 2018. So if I get reelected in 2018, then in 2019, we have a long session, and I get unlimited bills. So come to me in November or December of 2018, or let's just say right after I get elected, and say, hey, Nierman. Uh, and then also, I just got reelected, and so now I'm switching from campaign mode to, like, governing mode. Hey, you guys, uh, come on in. So now I'm switching to governing mode. You guys can sit over there if you, if you want so, um, uh, so, so that's a good time, time to do that, to, to get a bill to me. So that's one, one possible time that you can kind of influence the legislative process is uh, during that, uh, th that time there, that little, little window there. Do if we you lobby you? Do what? Do we lobby you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can lobby me. Or, or just, uh, you're my buddy, and I would do a bill if you had a good idea or something like that, right? And so it doesn't even take that much arm twisting or lobbying. Now, so now when you do that, so I might put it back on you and say, okay, I'll introduce the bill, but you got to do all the hard work there. So it's your idea that you want to make the speed limit 90 on I-5. So I'm going to say, that's your, you have to go and, and follow the bill through, and then I'll loan you my staff, or you can talk to my staff, and they'll help you with, with doing that. But so, so that's one possible thing. Possibly my heart's really into it, too. I really want to make the speed limit on I-5 90 miles an hour, so maybe I'll get on board with that, too. That would be the best of all possible worlds. So um, anyway, so that's that's uh, that's an opportunity there. So then once the bills get going, so here's what the hard part is. So what, what this presentation is about is it's about mo all the tools on, on the internet for for uh, um, doing all this stuff. I meant to do like a, like I was going to do like a sheet that had all the links on it there. So I will do that. If um, And if you email me, I'll send that to you or I'll uh, make one up or um, and put it on a web page somewhere. But uh, anyway, so we will have we will have that. But uh, um, but anyway, so the, so um, 
So now we're going to talk about how, how you do that. So let's say, let's say you're kind of just, you, you have an a interest in kind of a concept or a field, or I don't know how you'd want to say that or whatever. So like, let's say uh, Second Amendment rights. That might be one thing that you're interested in. Or maybe pro-life. Or maybe um, speed limits on I-5. Whatever, that's, that's kind of, or transportation. Or whatever. And so, so you, and you want to watch that, and you, and so you, you don't, you're not submitting any bill of your own, but you're just watching out there. You, you want good bills to pass, and you want bad bills to be killed, and so that's what your interest is. So now, so how do you, how do you, how do you skin that cat? And I have to say that the most difficult thing to do is to answer the question and say, show me, and then the next word is the difficult word, all. Show me all the bills that have to do with transportation in this session, or show me all the bills that have to do with Second Amendment in this session or something. That's very hard to, to get that to say, yep, I got them all. There's nothing else. Don't bother looking for anything else. We got them all. Um, that's, that's pretty hard to do. So in a legislative session, during one of the long legislative sessions, those are the real sessions there. During the short sessions, not that much goes on. Like I said, it's just political stuff. They're trying to screw us. We're trying to screw them. Uh, and um, they're the majority party. So it's like 90% of the screw it goes one way and 10% of the screw it goes the other way. And so. Um, Anyway, so that uh, um, uh, during a long session, um, we might do, there might be like 3,000 bills, of which, um, just to put a number out there, maybe 800 of them might actually move and go somewhere and, and get enacted into law or, or be close to getting enacted into law. So, um, uh, um, so that's a lot of bills. Even 800 like that is a lot. And uh, sometimes you even want to know about the ones that, that aren't. So uh, anyway, if you, go, if you go to this website here, this is the Oregon legislative website here, um, Oregon State Legislature, and, I'm, um, and it's, this is, it's OregonLegislature.gov if you, if you want to go to it. Not like I said, I'll, I can provide these links to people if you want them. Um, uh, it better be available. <laughs> so OregonLegislature.gov there. So, I wanna, so one of the things I want to stop and do is show you this here. So and I can't read that all that well. There. So, um, so I'm hovering over bills and laws there. I'll, I'll go around on the other side here. Um, and so there's some good things here. And so um, there's so that one, the best thing here is Oregon Constitution there. So you get the text, Oregon Constitution. And everybody, I assume everybody's kind of read the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, that, that helps less things. The, the U.S. Constitution is kind of, is, it, it's what a constitution was meant to be. It's like the, the outline of the rules of how we run our government. The legislative branch gets to do this. The president gets to do this. This is we can impeach people this way. We got elections this way. All that, but it doesn't. So the Oregon Constitution is kind of gets mucked up uh, really bad. It's got things in there like um, how do we tax liquor by the glass and uh, um, uh, mobile home fees and all this kind of stuff got stuck in Oregon Constitution. So it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's kind of buggered up. Um, should those be statutes? Yeah, they should be. Yeah, that is meant to be in there. But what, what the problem is, is that you pass a law and you say, all right, the speed limit on I-5 is 90. And then somebody comes in and says, uh, now we got safety issues. So we're going to ratchet that speed limit down to 80 or whatever. They say, oh yeah? Well, I'll show you. I'll stick it in the Constitution <laughs> so that nobody can change it, right? Oh, so oh. so that, that goes on a lot. And that's not really the right thing. That's not the right use of the Constitution oh. to say, you know, we're going to get our way in a more permanent way. Someone can go and repeal it or whatever, or you could have a court strike it down or whatever, but, um, but so that, that happens, and uh, um, I, I don't think that's a good thing. So uh, anyway, so one of the things that uh, I was in a conversation with someone today, and they were saying, um, we were talking about the, uh, the highway fund. So we're going to talk about transportation. That's going to be less happy here. So I just clicked on the Oregon Constitution. So there's the Oregon Constitution. There it is. If you scroll down and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, and when after a while, your uh, index finger will wear off down to the knuckle, and you'll be at the end there. But uh, uh, anyway, there's like a section in there on militias in the state of Oregon too. So, uh, but one of the things that, that I look for uh, that I do here is if I need to look something up. So I had a question: is so that in Oregon we have the highway fund, the state highway fund, and the highway fund we if we all know is dedicated to uh, roads and bridges, right? So how to go for highway projects. So when you pay your thir so your, thir your gas taxes, your, your 30 cents a gallon state gas tax there, that has to go for roads. We can't spend that on Medicaid, and we can't spend that on fish hatcheries or anything like that. It's got to go to roads, right? 
Well, wrong, because it can go to uh, ODOT administration. So what I'm going to do is, and someone was asking me today, really, that's in the Constitution? And I'm like, yep, it is, because I didn't believe it either. I had to look it up. So what I do here is I go to this page here that's got the Constitution, and then Control-F, you know, for find there, and I'm going to look up high, highway, and now i got, so I can't see, so I got, so uh, this is, Supervisors, collection taxes. Yeah. Uh, nope, that's not it. And it says highway, working on highway. Yep. And the election and appointment of supervisors. So you know about highways too, don't you? Yeah, I try not to run over. There's like a next button here. Matter of fact, the guy that got killed up there in Clackamas was one of my former workers. I think it's a down arrow. What do you do? Uh, down arrow. Flagger. Really? Yeah, I ran over by a double truck up there. Where is this? Like, what does that say there? Is that, that the highway fund? Is that talking about the highway fund? Or? It's, it's a revenue from taxes on yeah, yeah, yeah. motor vehicles and mm -hmm. section. That's it. Okay, so the, so this is the, this is the Oregon Constitution, and it says that uh, any taxes on uh, motor vehicles and fuel, right, have to go into the highway fund there. If I can sharpen that up just a little bit. Okay, so it, um, um, and it can be used for uh, exclusively for the construction, remedi remediation, reconstruction, reconstitution, improvement, repair, maintenance, operation, and use of the public highways, roads, streets, and roadside rest areas in the state. Okay, so that um, uh, any taxes levied on blah 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 motor fuel blah 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 blah. blah, blah uh, um, well, here's another thing too, or any other product used for the propulsion of a motor vehicle. I'm going to put a little asterisk there. And I want you to think about this. Is, so electricity? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's where I'm going here. So when I plug in my electric car, you're, you're, I just appointed you all judges. You're now a part of the Supreme Court of the state of Oregon. Is electricity a, a vehicle, a motor vehicle fuel, or any other product used for the propulsion of a motor vehicle? Yes. Just hang on to that for a second here. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to that. If I forget, somebody remind me too. Um, and so, um, uh, uh, um, any tax. Yes. Could, any tax. It could be used because, you know, bikes. Bikes? Yeah. So, but, okay, so your legs. Of a vehicle. Right, so, right, and so your legs. But we don't tax your legs, do we? But if we did have well, like we a. We tax the bike now. Like, well, yeah, we tax the bike. So, yeah, so, um, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, how about yeah. that? Yeah. Although the, the bike tax, though, they did put that in the transportation package, so it is going for that. But you're right, though, if they tried to divert that to something else, we could have a we could have a little uh, judicial snit about that there. Um, okay, may also be used for the cost of administration and refunds or credits authorized by law. So it can be used for ODOT administration. So that that's a problem. We got a problem with that. Five thousand in Salem. So right now, so you guys thought that when the guy. The guy, so we don't have self-service gas. You don't get to hang up your own little pump there. Now, we do have a little bit of self-service gas now in eastern Oregon at certain hours of the day. I don't know if you know that. They snuck that in, which is a good thing. I was but, amazed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the gateway drug to self-service gas. I'm a fan of self-service gas. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so, um, so right now, so, you, um, so we have, uh, um, when, you, when you hang up that pump there and you just got done paying your 30 cents a gallon for that, that it goes to... All the things there are roads, um, re repair, bass. maintenance, blah, 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 roadside rest areas, blah, 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 that whole list there, and administration. And so one of the things that you're getting for your highway fuel there is you're getting a $90 million DMV computer system there, which I bet you didn't know that, did you? Oh, you, mean the, you mean the one they spent almost $400 million no, in the no, 90s that didn't no. work? No, yes. this is to replace that one that yeah. never got installed. And so, uh, yeah, On so top kind of. the two million we spent for Google City that didn't happen? Well, this is so you can yeah, get off planes, right? Well, that's part of the city. Well, that, did they? That's Multnomah <laughs> County. Yeah. This is Can't for the real ID. That's city. Yeah. Real ID? Right? The what? The new computer system is for the, the facial recognition no, for federal. No, so so let me stop you here. So so right now, so it's so, so right now the DMV software, they don't have like a system. They have a bunch of subsystems that are kind of cobbled together. Okay. And so it's very funny because some of the things are these old, you know, green screen things like that. And you can just tell, whoa, this is really old and antiquated. Nobody works with that except the Oregon DMV, right? But they do 
have this facial recognition thing, and it's kind of cool. Um, and so that's why now when you take your DMV picture for your driver's license, they make you take your glasses off. Well, me, I wear glasses yeah. all the time. I wear them 24-7, so I say, when, when the cop pulls me over, he's going to look at, like, the squirrel Mike Nearman, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I don't know if that's the same guy as this, you know, the right. nice, handsome politician Mike Nearman or whatever. So anyway, but, but uh, so um, I was at the DMV, uh, uh, an official tour there, and they were giving me this thing of uh, this thing. So what they do is they take your picture, and then it goes through this little algorithm, and they measure like how close your eyes are together and your nose and all this kind of stuff. I mean, not a person does it, but a computer program does it. Well, anyway, so they got this thing, and they say, well, let's show you what we do with that data there. And so they have things like, okay, look at, see this one? These two guys, they're twins, right? And you say, oh, yeah, I get that. They're identical twins. That's why it got flagged. That's why the system flagged it. And then they said, um, okay, here's one. Here's two guys, and they're both Bob Jones or whatever. That's not an appropriate name because there's probably a like gazillion Bob Joneses. But there's two guys where this is a crime right here. This is somebody trying to impersonate someone. This is not Bob Jones on the right. This is Bob Jones on the left, but this is somebody trying to get a driver's license in Bob Jones' name. We caught him, whatever. And then they have other ones. This is kind of cool. Is um, They said, oh, here we got 162 people. And you look at them, and you go, wow, that, they kind of look a little bit the same, but there's certain like little facial characteristics that that the computer can't tell apart, and so it just says these might be the same person. But a human being looks at them and you go, no, that's not the same person. But I can see why you made that mistake, but it was kind of cool. But anyway, so then you mentioned Real ID Act. So I was, I was a co-sponsor of the Real ID Bill for this uh, session here. We're about to lose our ability to right. use our Oregon driver's license to get on a plane. I got a passport, tell shit. <laughs> yeah, a passport will work, but not everybody has one. So um, anyway, so we passed that, so we're going to hopefully get a federal waiver, and we'll... Um, We'll uh, be able to use real ID. Okay, so um, anyway, so that's how to use the Oregon Constitution there is to, to go through that. Okay, did I open up any can of worms? Okay, I did. I opened up the can of worms about the... Uh, propulsion. The propulsion, yeah. And I said electricity there. So I so um, we have this these guys in the basement, these lawyers in the basement in the Capitol called Legislative Council. And um, I... So Can we just seal it? The what? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I've been down they to the make dungeon the, there, so it's possible we can they, they make the bills, so if we do that, we don't get any more bills. And we need some bills to fix some of the things that are wrong with the state of Oregon. But anyway, so, um, so they, let's, this is Legislative Council. So, and that's, that's their main thing that they do is they write up the bills and the amendments. So we just give them our ideas, and then they know how to weave it into Oregon law and how to make it constitutional and all that kind of stuff. Although, just a little asterisk there, they will write an unconstitutional bill for you. If you say, I want a bill written that says um, no Chinese people can live in Eastern Oregon or something like that, that would be flagrantly unconstitutional or whatever, they'll write that bill for me and they'll say, oh, Representative Dearman, let's just let you know that you're going to get hammered when you go to the courts. Right after well, they're right the same after. rat things yeah. that went through and told Pena Kotek that oh, they don't need a three-fifth because based on the decision yeah. that the state of Washington made against us, about being taxed on their people coming across the state line. Isn't we going to wind up in the same litigation again because we're going to put a toll road right there at the state line coming in? So well, that, would be, do it. that would be federal, that would be a federal thing there. So we can come back to that in a second. Remind me if I need to. Mm -hmm. I want to get on, I want to burn this bridge here. Oh, yeah. So um, so, that, so we're talking about electricity used to, to do that. So one of the things that legislative council will do is we can write to them and ask them to do like an opinion on it. And so I said, isn't electricity a fuel used to propel a motor vehicle. So they write back and they go, ah, oh, well, thanks, Representative Nierman. So uh, they, got, they got a six-page response. I, I'll be happy to send it to you if you want. They said, ah, oh, you know, not really, no. Because, you know, back in 1913 when they wrote this section of the, of the Constitution, they had golf carts back then, and they didn't think to tax them. So apparently the framers of this part of the Constitution did not intend for electricity to be a tax. Really? Really? Because I think what it, the idea of this is, is that if you're on the road, you're doing damage to the road. Or, uh, and I, so I used to think like that. I used to think, oh, that's, that's why we tax cars that are on the road, is because they do damage to the road. But actually, cars don't even do any damage to the road. If we kicked every truck off of the roads of the state of Oregon, we could pretty much just have the roads just like the way they are, and they would just be like that, and they would stay like that forever, almost forever. Well, it's, so you're right. Snow, snow and ice yeah. does, does yeah. damage. But, 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 but snow and ice, snow and ice, kind of uh, it um, it exploits an existing crack is what it does. 
And so it, um, it, it's the trucks that make the cracks. But what, what we're really taxing them for is not so much the damage they do to the road, but just for the physical space that they take up. Because, and it's congestion is what it is. And so then trucks cause congestion, but then also they do damage to the road. But, and so that's why we have taxing there. And part of the Oregon Constitution, too, says that we have to tax trucks and automobiles equitably, equally. And so um, that's part of that. So you can't just say, oh, well, we're going to pick on the trucks and make them pay it all, or we're going to pick on the cars and make them pay it all. You can't do either. You have to, it has to be taxed equitably. And then that's not well defined what that means in the Constitution. So there's possibility for monkey business, but that's kind of a good thing is everybody pays. So um, anyway, so uh, um, uh, anyway, legislative council says no, electricity is not a fuel used to propel a motor vehicle. I don't know how they get around that there. So uh, anyway, so um, so that's that's the Oregon Constitution. That's how I get around in there. And uh, if you ever uh, had a question about the Oregon Constitution, you could call me or call my staff and uh, um, at my official office there, and we could help you um, look up whatever you needed to look up if you had a question about that. So. Statutes. Well, isn't there a form, a repeal form on here? Um, uh, or how do you go about it? No, so, so, um, so uh, we repeal stuff all the time. So one of the things, uh, when you look at a bill, when, when you get the text of the bill, there's three kinds of type in there. There's just the regular type, and what the regular type is, it's just the existing law that's not, that's not in question or anything like that. So like, for instance, if I was going to make the the speed limit, 90 miles an hour. Somewhere in Oregon law, there's a there's a section of law that says, I'll just make this up, I don't know that this is true. The speed limit on I-5 shall be 65 miles an hour, right? There's a law somewhere in Oregon revised statutes that says that. What they're going to do is they're going to take that and they're going to put it in regular type and they're going to reprint that exactly. Because that's the only thing that's in question is 90. Yeah, 65 is being changed to 90. So they're going to put that in brackets, and they're going to put the 90 in bold there, mm -hmm. and they're going to put the 65 in italics. Like an amendment or something. Right. So, so, yeah. But there's not really... So when we do a bill, oftentimes things come out and things go in. And stuff. New stuff gets added. No, 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 no. That's not done. But what about, like, there's no one that are fixed lines? Oh, okay. Yeah. So what you're talking about is you're talking about a thing called a referendum. And so, yeah. So in Oregon, and so we have like uh, we have one referendum petition going around right now. Uh, it's uh, um, IP 301. It's to repeal uh, the uh, healthcare tax. The healthcare tax. Yeah. yeah, 2631 House Bill 2631, which was a healthcare tax. So it, it's a one and a half percent tax on individual healthcare plans. So you know, there's different ways to get healthcare. Most people get it as a group healthcare plan with your work. Some people get uh, Medicaid, some people get Medicare, some people get VA or whatever, and then you're right. Then there's the, then there's people that are left over that get uh, health care on the individual marketplace. Does anybody know if they get? Does anybody want to say if they get health care on the individual marketplace? I do. You do? Because you're a small business person, right? And so. Six hundred and five dollars a month just for me and my child. Fortunately, the state kind of did a nice thing. I can make up to hundred thousand dollars a year, and my children. Qualify for Oregon Health Plan, mm. but then if they're on that, it's really difficult to you don't know to, to find a provider. Yeah. So, but at least at least yeah. then you get it uh, low cost thing. So I've been building my own business. By the way, I, when I started it about five and a half years ago, I was living in my van in Portland, but I've grounded out. I've made quite a bit now, but I spend a lot to stay in business too, and I am in the market to buy a health care plan that it's being priced out of my range. And that would be and a group plan though, right? That no, no, I'm not going to an individual plan. plan. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, just for your, yourself? Because I'm self-employed. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and so you are uh, you are participating in the individual market. Then. Yes. Yeah. So I, I appreciate I, I appreciate both you guys willing to chip in one and a half percent extra. Because you, yeah. you have a lot of extra money laying around. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's going to be three percent. The what? There's a one and a half percent on the net income of the hospitals too. Yeah. So it's going to actually cost more. So than so uh, so now um, uh, that's actually a six percent. It's a six percent on the net income of the hospitals. Ooh. That tax is a little bit tricky because um, it sounds like a bad thing, but what it is is the hospitals tax themselves. That tax money then gets matched by the federal government 
and then get spent on the hospitals there. So it'd be like if I was a widget maker, I would tax tax myself six percent to give poor people the ability to buy my widgets. And why is why is Albany Hospital putting projects on hold because they don't know how this tax is going to affect them? And they don't trust the state government. They don't no. trust the state government. Um, no, no, no. Wait for the administrative rules and for it to be. No, 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 no. So, so this this is the provider tax. So I, I don't think what they're worried about is the. Because in the in the in the bill, the the paper that came with my this, the the signature sheet, it had both the one and a half on on the individual plans and a one and a half on the net from uh, healthcare facilities. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right about so that. The six percent something else. Oh, that, so that's over and above the six percent okay. that gets matched by the federal government. Another one and a half percent. Yeah, that, 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 and I'm, 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 check me on that. So I'm not sure. And so that, that, that I just looked at it this morning, and I'm pretty, I know it was one and a half on individuals and one and a half on. I know that all the legacy. So the the, 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 uh, the, the, pro, the the base yeah. provider tax, yeah. so the six percent. Yeah. The hospitals don't really mind that because that's just a way of funding Medicare. But I, to me, that seems like just the screwiest thing in the world right. to to tax it yeah. and then give the money to your poor customers so they can buy your stuff. That just seems like like it's it's hokey. But I get it that that's that they want it and then whatever. Well, Mike, you got. Um, instead of them matching, we're doing the matching for them. No, well, so, no, 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 no. So yours, yours, yours is just plain old. You're just being just taxed. Just just ransack highway robbery yeah. to pay for Medicaid. That's it. Because you got a bunch of extra money laying around. So it's different. You're, I mean, you don't get anything out of a Medicaid person. The hospital gets a customer out of a Medicaid person. But if you pay for, you know, some guy who's a poor guy who doesn't have uh, health care, if you pay for them, I mean, that's very nice of you, and we all appreciate you um, taking care of the community and everything like that. But, but you, you don't really, guy. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so you don't really get anything out of it. So society kind of gets something out of it. The hospitals for sure get something out of it, but you don't really get anything out of it. I don't think you get a warm, fuzzy feeling like you're doing great work for society or anything like that. If, if everybody was pitching in, you might feel a little bit better about it. But even then, whatever. So um, anyway. All right, gosh, we got dragged way off topic here, which is great. That's what this, I live to be dragged off topic, i got to tell you. So anyway, so I appreciate that. Okay, any questions now? That to, now we, we've covered a lot of stuff from electric cars to provider tax to... Uh, is propane co you don't covered? That is. Propane is covered, yeah. Now, so they, so, um, uh, so what, what's, yes. so here's the thing. They have a thing called the lawnmower fund, right? Mm -hmm. And so this, you'll, you'll, this, is, this is another thing which will make you hate politicians. So these politicians are thinking, and... This, I hate this. Gosh, this is it's because these this money has to go for transportation. And I just hate that because it's tied up in the damn roads. I want to spend it on on the, the the Mike Nierman office building or something like that. I don't know or whatever some other project or something like that. How can we get get our little mitts on some of that money? You say, well, guess what? You know, not every dollar. You know, these guys come into the gas station all the time and they're filling up these gas cans for their lawnmower at home, right? Well, that is not. Blah, 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 used to propel a motor vehicle, right? A lawnmower is not a motor vehicle, is it, right? It's a, oh yeah, well, let's get an estimate on how much of that money is going into those gas cans to propel lawnmowers, not propel lawnmowers, I guess, to operate. We have to operate the lawnmowers, right? Mm -hmm. And let's take that money out of the transportation fund and we can spend it on whatever we want, yippee, right? And so they do that. They have a thing called the lawnmower fund where they dip into that and they take that money out and then it's not bound by the Constitution because it's not used for propel a motor vehicle, right? Although, I have a, a lawnmower that's self-propelled. Maybe I could go have a lawsuit or whatever. But anyway, I got, I'm too busy. I don't need to do this kind of stuff. And it's kind of funny. It would be good for the humor value. But uh, anyway, so... Well, how, um, how do they know if I go to fill up propane that I'm not running my diesel truck on? Or your barbecue or whatever, or something like that. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. I'm or, running the yeah, vehicle on. Yeah. So, so yeah. and what they do, they, they have economists. They have economists go in and just do estimates. And that's what happens with the lawnmower fund there. And so they... Uh, they just estimate it, and uh, they're probably kind of right, and if they're wrong, nobody can prove it, and right. yeah. it doesn't really matter that much, whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's the it's yeah. the nature of these money-grubbing politicians of like, oh, I just found a way we can divert some of that money, ha, <laughs> whatever, to my little pet project or whatever or something. Anyway, so, do you know what ORS this is? This is the this Constitution. Constitution, baby, I mean, which... Section uh, 3A. 3A. Uh, oh, I think I see a, a problem here. 
Just one? <laughs> I'm only going to take a few seconds here. How is the economist held accountable for this estimate? By that I'm saying, to be ridiculous, 50% of yeah. the fuel goes to lawnmowers and yeah. chainsaws. Good, so you just got hired as the as Team Kotex economist. <laughs> She's going to dip all that money out of the transportation I'm fund retired, right? and put it into affordable housing or something like that, right? So, uh, yeah, so you're retired. You don't want to be the economist there. So it's legislative fiscal office is the uh, accountants that do that. And, uh, and they have another one over in the Department of Administrative Services. I'm trying to get an acronym for it, but LCSO. anyway. LCSO. No, it's uh, no, it's like it's DPO or something like that. But anyway, they have economists that do that, and they're answerable to the executive branch, and you get to hire the executive in Oregon, which is the governor. And so um, so that's, okay. the, that's so the stream so of accountability there. Not, not accountable. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Well, they, well, they are accountable, but they're accountable to do the will of whoever's the governor there. Yeah. But I, I really, I, it's the fact of them doing it is the monkey business. The actual numbers that they come up with are probably past the laugh test. So, because, so uh, anyway. Are they paid for these studies, though? Or? Do they what? Are they generally oh, paid for these studies? Well, the, the economist yeah. gets paid, but I mean, he works for the state. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. And they, they could farm it out. Yeah, but I don't know that. That they do that or whatever. But anyway, okay. All right. So um, let's see what time it is. Man, it's seven o'clock already, and I haven't even gotten to the to the website that I need to get to. All right. So let me. Um, okay. So we're gonna just say we're done here. Okay. So now, um, well, let's see here. I can't yeah. can't see all my buttons here. I want to. You want to go ahead and look, Marks? What you want? No, I want to go back. I want to hit the back button. I'm just clicking blindly here. Something, something bad is going to happen. I <laughs> press start in World War Three or something like that. Right? There we go. Hey, I hit it. Okay. You what? So, I, so you guys don't know this. So I, mean, I used to work with Marcy like decades ago uh, in tech support, whatever. So I have to say though, I'm kind of proud of myself. I got all this technology working here, and uh, my internet connection is a mobile hotspot through my phone right here. So I have to say, uh, I'm kind of a little bit proud of myself. So uh, what did the engineers think? <laughs> So I, I am now. I'm, I'm a software engineer. Okay. So you go to this site, OregonLegislature.gov, and then this link right here. If you click on this, this says OLIS here. OLIS stands for Oregon Legislative Information System. There, and there's a possibility to log into it. I don't think I'm logged in there. When I log in, the, the, I get nothing different than you, except I get the ability to co-sponsor bills. I can click on a little button to co-sponsor bills. So if you feel jealous that you don't have a login, you're going to have to cancel all bills. Cancel all bills. <laughs> I don't think that's going to do that. So that, that's a, there's a point there. Is so once when you have a bill, once you introduce the bill and it gets first read, it doesn't even belong to you anymore, and you can't cancel it. And you might and and it, the, we talked last week about every bill has a relating to clause, right? So if you have a bill relating to education or something like that, and it says blah 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 enable charter schools or something like that, right? And I turn in that bill, someone else can do an amendment and gut and stuff and say all charter schools are canceled or whatever, something like that. And guess what? I'm still the, the chief sponsor of that bill. And I can take my name off of it, but uh, but I can't kill the bill. I can't say, hey, that's my bill. You but can't do that to my bill. Mike, a lot of bills that was pushed through, did you notice there was no sponsors to it? Mm -hmm. right. right. There's that. no liability being held to these idiots that right. is put, especially from the judicial, which pushed two-thirds of the bills through this legislative process yeah. wrongly because a lot of money bills supposed to start from the House. Yeah, that's straight. Well, up. well, there was only the one bill, the, the uh, Senate Bill 28, and I, but anyway, that, so so that point is good though. So a lot of bills are sponsored, and most of the revenue bills are sponsored by the Committee on Revenue, because the Committee on Revenue doesn't have to run for re-election. Mike Nearman has to run for re-election. Phil Barnhart, who's the chair of the Committee on Revenue, has to run for re-election. He doesn't want to put his name on the revenue bills. So anyway, so they do that. So, so you, what? So on that point, real quick. Yeah. So, what's the downside? If we were to do a citizen initiative to make it where they couldn't put out a committee bill, yeah, I, I, I would I would support that. There's, is there's, there is there any downside? No, there's for no our there's side? no downside except I mean I, I, I mean obviously just, yeah money bills you're you know so me you me as a politician I would like to hide and not have the light of day shone on me I guess that's the only Damn downside. Bro, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't even believe that I would I would like to have the light of day shine right. on me. So um did, so did McLean or somebody just call for that? Couple weeks yep. ago. Yeah, and actually, we, we got a thing that used to be that when you do an amendment, that they, they, they would not put your name on the amendment. And now every amendment has to have a name on it. They have one exception. 
is if you if you have a group that you're working with, like so if I'm working with the Humane Society and right. the Humane Society wants to do an amendment, I can put the amendment in at the request of the Humane Society. Okay. Which to, no, 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 that's not okay. Because the Humane Society doesn't run for re-election. And Bob can't go out and say, I'm going to get the Humane Society out of office. So it needs uh, to say, at the request of Mike Nairn, or Dan Phil Barnhart, or, or, or Dan yeah. Rayfield. So, uh, so it's, it's not acceptable. And to me, the only thing that's acceptable okay. is every single bill has to have at least one name on it. And, and that name has to be in a list of 90 people. There's only 90 people that can be have their name on there. Now you can say, this bill, this amendment is Mike Nierman at the request of the Humane Society and the Little right. Sisters of the Poor and the uh, American Tire Association, whatever. You can do all that too, but it's got to have at least one name on it that's a member that's a member of the assembly that runs right. for re-election every two or four years. Period. There's nothing less that's acceptable. And, and the, only, the only way I can see so it, from the outside getting something like that passed is for us to do it. I don't. I don't well, see. Although, that. although no, because because uh, we got kind of to yeah, that direction. It used to be amendments <laughs> didn't have to be identified. Oh, okay. Now every amendment. Does. So there. So they. So it is, yeah, I, right. There's there's some adults in the building, and so uh, okay. so it whatever. And so I think that that um, <coughs> December, November, December of an even numbered year. Yeah. You need to go to your elected representatives and say. You, would you please support a rule? And we—it's not even a law; it's just the rules that we that we work under in the legislature. Legislative rule that requires that every bill does that. So not even the governor of the state of Oregon, I don't think, should be able to put a bill before the legislature. If the governor wants a bill, she can go find some guy in the '90 or some girl in the '90 and shoulder tap them and say, "Hey, would you do this bill for me?" And I'm even okay with having to think—you know—when we have the rule that says you only get two bills to say. If you could, you get a free one if you do it at the request of the governor. As long as you put your name on it, say, um, this chief sponsor is Mike Nearman at the request of the governor, and because it says at the request of the governor, it doesn't count as one of my two bills. I'm even okay with that. Just the numbering, to have the governor get to kind of skip the, the numbering requirement or whatever, or maybe put a number requirement of five or ten on the governor, like that. But uh, the numbering thing's not that big of a deal, but just to say that every bill has to be accountable from somebody in the legislature. That's the easiest way to do it is to do it with a rule because we can do that ourselves and we don't have to do that. The second best way to do it would be to pass a law that does it or an a initiative or whatever. But the problem is, is when you pass a law, the legislature can always exempt ourselves from whatever law is passed there. Say, notwithstanding this law that says this, this is true or whatever. I understand so, we should do yeah, I'm so, sorry. If you vote for a law, legislative or senatorially, you should not have no double exemption. Right. That's the problem we got. No, 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 no. So, so every now, every now and then, you want to be able to have an exemption because you have a weird situation come up. So you say, like for instance, um, nobody can drive faster than 65 miles an hour on I-5, and then you say, well, wait a minute. Now we've got this new thing where they put in a new lane or something. You say, notwithstanding the law that says you can't drive 65 or more on I-5, you can drive 80 on this little. Audubon bypass or whatever, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, so there are situations when you want to do that, but I get it. What you're saying of this, he's saying like, the blanket exemption. The, yeah, yeah, I was like, like well, we just I'm don't have to follow the law. Whatever. I'm looking at the states north and south. They give themselves exemptions to every damn law. Yeah, and I'm a little adamant about it. But I'm not trying to be cold or disrespectful. Laws that put some common folks in more hairs in call nine yeah. for tax revenue sense. Yeah. Or the I just saw an example that we were just talking about when I was trying to follow you over there. I ended up in a section about exemptions to the speed limit, mm -hmm. trying to find out if you could pass the speed limit so it was 90. And in fact, we have a whole section of highways, including the freeways, that are exempt from our speed limits that have 65 on rural roads and 70 mm -hmm. on, on 84 is one yeah. from Dallas, or from the Dallas on. Uh, 20 from and I think uh, ODOT has the authority to up it to 75. Part of the problem there is ODOT, ODOT has, so we have these things called key performance measures that we put on, that the legislature puts on agencies and say, this is what we're going to judge you on. When you ask us for budget, we judge you on these things here. And one of the things that ODOT gets judged on is highway safety. So they don't get ever judged on transportation efficiency. Did we get Pickering to his destination in a timely manner? We don't care. Did Pickering live or not get injured when he got to his thing? We care about that. So now what do you think happens to the to when they say, well, now ODOT has the authority to move the speed limit up to 75. The road was designed for 75, and so what do you think happens? They say, 
No way, because we're getting judged on that safety thing, but we're not getting judged on the efficiency thing. And we need to we need to balance those out. So uh, anyway, so that's that's what goes on with that there. So. Mike, going back to uh, what you were referring to as far as names being placed on on these on these bills that I understand. Mm -hmm. The premise there is, is for accountability and transparency. Yeah. Is that what you're Yeah, so when somebody puts somebody a bill before be the, Yeah, so you can unelect me. You know, you yeah, can't unelect me. I didn't like what you That was like a dumb bill. Who did that? That was Mike. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm not voting for you next. It, okay, got it. Exactly, exactly. And I, I, now I, I, I do. Or in my case, that. you'd say, I'd like to know who it is. That, that yeah. bill was great. Who did that bill? Right? Nearman. <laughs> what a yeah. stud. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so um, okay. anyway, so uh, yeah, so we need, we need to be able to do that rather than to say, I oh, the Committee on Revenue course. or the Department of Human Services. We don't, you're not going to unelect the Department of Human Services. Right. They need to be held That's accountable, but in different ways. But uh, exactly. you need to vote me out of office or keep yeah. voting me into office, whatever, whatever you because think. Of the, based off of the good or bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that's the idea there. Okay, so uh, anyway, so when, when this comes up, so I just went to Olus there, I clicked on Olus, and when this comes up, this has this has all the stuff that's going on. So this is actually how I, this, I use this tool actually to run my day. So I go, there's the, the Senate side and the House side here. And so remember we were talking about in uh, the other meeting, we are talking about third readings and second readings and first readings there. So first readings, that's what we're going to vote on on the floor today. Well, we're not in session today, so it's going to be pretty boring, right? So I, you can, there's a way you can set the date back there. So I, um, I could do that. Let me set the date back here. And if I click on this, I'm going to set the date back. And I'm going to hope that I hit a, uh, let's see, go back a couple of months. What is that? That's in May, right? Yep. Yes. Some Very random... Nice. Unknown Tuesday in May, right? Mm -hmm. And so now I got House third readings, right? And there we go. So that's what we're going to do today on Tuesday, May, whatever that was. Is we're going to see those. We're going to do those bills. We're going to vote on those bills there. So that's what I'm going to look at there. So there's two of them there. And if you hover over them, so if you hover over them, you get the little summary thing of what they're what they're about. Uh, let's see. You saw it just pop up there. There you go. So what does that say? Where is August in Oregon albacore tuna month. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh great. <laughs> ah! How so, much um, albacore tuna we get off this coast? Yeah. Yeah. I like to so, yeah, this bill was a little bit controversial because you know what they did? I can't believe that. Is they made August 2017 albacore tuna month. You know, dude, if you're going to do that, just make every August from now until the apocalypse albacore tuna month. Yeah. And then we just don't have to deal with this ever again. So I've... So I usually vote yes on these things just because I don't want to get in a fight with the albacore tuna guys and all kind of stuff. But I don't generally sponsor these things, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't do this kind of stuff. Now you remember, the only goody crackers. It's not that funny. It's just not. It's funny, but it's not that funny. So you just need to calm down now. It costs a lot of money to do it. The committee on marijuana regulation spent. I want to get to that. I want to get to Les's point in a second. But I want to talk more about albacore tuna month here. Is um, <laughs> So, uh, anyway. Can you stand against the albacore tuna people, Mike? <laughs> no, no, they're, I'm sure they're good people. I don't know any of them, but uh, I'm sure they're just great guys. But uh, like anyway, um, but I, so i got to say is when we when we talked first, we talked yesterday, last week, we said there's three functions of the state legislature. So the, the first one is we make laws. And the second one is, is that we pass budgets and appropriate money. That's kind of one and the same there. And then the third thing we do is we perform ceremonial functions. And that's what this is. It's a ceremonial thing. It doesn't have any meaning. It doesn't do anything. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody raises any money or anything like that. It's just, we just make a proclamation that we're doing that. And you notice how the, the bill, it's not HB or SB, like House bill or Senate bill. Right. It's HCR, which is House Concurrent Resolution. And that's what they do with those. They have a different kind of thing for them. It puts it in a different category there. So uh, it's not really part of... Oregon law, although it kind of is there. And so I'm okay with that. This is, this, we don't have a king or a queen of Oregon. And so somebody needs to perform ceremonial functions. And I'm fine for having the legislature do that. Is so, it once in July already? Somebody else is not there? Yeah, and, and August is probably 14 different months. It's like squirrel protection month and parachute safety <laughs> month and, uh, you know, and, uh, um, inside of the incisor dental hygiene month, and you know, it's probably 14 things, and that's okay, you know, because yeah. the dental hygiene doesn't compete with albacore tuna. They can both have the same month, and there's only 12 was this, months. Was this sponsored by the Oregon Sportsman's Association or PETA? <laughs> you know, I think it, it's more like the Oregon Sportsman's Association. I think it's probably the, the, the fish, fishery association. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you have another question? Or, no, okay. 
All right. So uh, anyway, so so that's so that's the this is a this is the what, what did I say? This is the first reading. There third, third, third reading. reading. Yeah. So third reading is what we're going to vote on today. There. Second reading is is a warning of we're going to vote on this stuff uh, coming up pretty soon, probably tomorrow, right? So that's so. As I say, no second readings there. Okay. Yeah, I'm to display. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then uh, first readings. Uh, there might not be any there. Let's see. But, um, oh, so oh, so yeah. first oh, readings are. And I'm just going to hover over some random first yeah, reading. Second readings now. Yeah. So there, there. So I just hovered over some random reading there. Oh, that is that second reading. There's a development department to require <laughs> fingerprints of certain for the purpose of recruiting. What the. Yeah. So, so. It, oh, my glasses. Yeah. It just. Uh, I, I remember that bill. It was just to um, require them to do finger, allow them to do check. fingerprints for their for their background check because they, they go get more information off the fingerprints there. So, the, okay. So these are second readings. Oh wait. Uh, committee referrals. Oh okay. So okay. So that. Uh, so I, uh, these weren't third readings. These were committee referrals. Right. So that that's what that's what happens. So the first thing that happens to a bill. When you drop it, you drop the bill, and then it gets referred to a committee there. So these got referred to whatever committee, and then so these are uh, second readings. Second readings. It, so apparently we didn't have, well, we don't have, we didn't have any first readings because it's getting to be May, and in May they're not introducing very much stuff. They introduce a lot of stuff at the very beginning, and then uh, close your ears for a second, Ronnie. And then in the last week or so they introduce a lot of stuff there. But uh, mm -hmm. um, anyway. But in between, they don't really introduce that much stuff there. All the committees are closed. You can't really do anything. The only way you can introduce something is if you have the, the blessing of the speaker that, yeah, this is going to go, this is going to move. Here. So how second readings there. And then uh, a second reading means this is coming up. We're going to do this on the floor pretty soon, probably tomorrow. And then third readings, this is we're going to do this on the floor today here. A bit deep, more detailed here. And it's got things like it's got the who the carrier is on the bill there, right? And so... Uh, um, you know, hover over that, and uh, you can see that. Williamson, usual suspect. Yeah, usual, yeah, she is one usual suspect. Smith, Warner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post, Post has carried a bill there. Uh, and so, now, so what's a carrier? We talked about this before. So a carrier is a person who's going to be on the floor and give, like, an advertisement for the bill, right? So when we're doing the parliamentary procedure, then, okay, you're up next, and so it's Representative Nierman, and you get up there, and you get to give a 10-minute speech, and you're expected to... Um, sell it. To sell it, yeah. It's, it's, it's assumed. your moment of pitching? The what? That's your moment to pitch? Yeah, that's yeah. your moment to pitch it, yeah. Okay. And, it's and, going to say and that. by decorum, you're expected to vote for the bill. Now, I saw, this is the first time I saw this ever in my life, and uh, I now have it in my bucket list, but Representative Barreto actually was the carrier of the bill and voted against it, so I can't <laughs> wait to do that someday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's a special kind of orderliness there, but the. Uh, oh. Anyway, well, so was it a matter of it got it and stuff? Kind of and no, no, because what, what's happening is it comes out of committee, and once it comes out of committee, they're, they're saying, we move it to the floor. And so nothing's going to happen in that bill. And then at that point, they say, okay, we just voted this to go to the floor. It's in its final form. I mean, it could go to the Senate and change, and then but then you could change your mind. That would be understandable. But, um, but it's going to the floor, and you just voted for it, and they, they said, who wants to carry this bill? And Barreto said, I will, because he likes it and he thinks it's going to make him look good, right? And then, I don't know, for some reason, somebody got to him and he voted no. Whatever. That's kind of cool. There. I'll give another thing about <laughs> carriers of the bill. Is, so, you know, usually they go, okay, you know, like, let's say it's like a bill that doesn't really mean that much. This isn't like a big bill that people are going to say, oh, gosh, that Nierman, what a beloved statesman, because he carried this bill that moved a comma in the Department of Revenue Code or something like that. Right? So it's one of these stupid kind of housekeeping bills. They say, okay, who wants to carry this? And everybody's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, so, um, uh, so they had uh, Jim Widener, I don't know if you remember him, oh, used yeah. to be the representative from McMinnville there. He would vote no on bills, and then when everybody would go, okay, who wants to carry this? He'd go, oh, I will, even though he just voted no on it. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So he was funny. Anyway, so um, why did he do that? Uh, he's just—he was like the, just he was, to get it done with. Yeah, no, no, no. He was—I I think he was like, um, like the, so. There was like uh, 60 representatives, and he was responsible for about 50 percent of the smart assery that went on in that. <laughs> like, so, uh, so, so what happened? I take—I do about 20 percent of it right now myself, but I have a hard time keeping that level up. I don't know how <laughs> what happens if nobody carries the bill? No, no. So somebody has to carry the bill, or and if, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, well, I mean, but but the the. 
the committee chair would carry it themselves, and that often happens. They will. Uh, uh, that's why you see Williamson up there. She carries a lot, a lot she of bills. She carries a lot of bills to the floor all the time. She does because she's the chair of the rules committee, and there's oh, okay. just there's controversial bills. There's bills that are kind of meaningless that just end up in rules. There's you know whatever, and sh and nobody wants to carry them or you know whatever they're. And so she'll just carry them. So it would pretty much fall on the committee well, chair. Although area. the committee chair Which might not like that bill, and maybe it was just kind of passing it through as a courtesy right. so you keep their chairmanship <laughs> and all that. So they're, whatever, it, it could theoretically add. All. all right, so that's kind, of the, that's kind of the calendar there of the day-to-day -day of what, what's going on in the list. All right, at the top. So now I, I want to go back to something that I started with here. Of, let's say you have like a general interest of Second Amendment or pro-life or trucking, or um, what, or transportation, transportation or logging, forestry, health care, health care, water. So, so let's say you had that. And so now remember I said, so it's pretty impossible to say, if you come to me and say, I want a list of every, and the, the tough word is every or all, or, you know, or every bill that has to do with blah, 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 or something like that. That's going to be pretty hard to do because we have thousands of bills. And it'll be pretty hard to find them. So there's a couple of ways to find them. So one is is so I don't know, somebody pick the topic. Whatever. Pick, pick the water topic. meters. Water meters. That that's You're a great right topic. On. That's a great topic. Is I want to know what's going on with water meters. I want to know everything that happened during this session for water meters there. Now uh, before I do that, I just want to click on one thing right now. This someday, if if you get heavily into this, you're going to get burned by this someday too. So I just clicked on that, and what that is is that session, and that tells you what session you're in. And what it does, it programs a little cookie on your own computer there that says only consider stuff from this session here. Oh. Then you can go change it any time. You see, you see how you're going to get burned, right? right? I, yeah. You're going to be in the yeah. 2013 session, and then you're going to say, huh, I want to look for that 2017 bill, and you're not going to find it. Or you're going to go, wait a minute, that's Senate Bill 719, and it's on um, uh, length restrictions on... on uh, trailers or something like that. It's not firearms, but right. they're, they're wrong, you know, whatever, because you're in the wrong session, because they reuse the bill numbers there. So if you if you do this long enough, you'll get burned by this. <coughs> I've been burned by it. I've seen other people get burned by it. But anyway, so that's that would be how you'd go look back at other sessions there. What it'll do is it'll pick in the upper left there, kind of in the white section there, it says 2017 regular session there. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon we're going to start having what's called legislative days where we get together we have like little sessions for three days. We don't actually go into sessions. We don't pass any laws. So you're, you're still safe. You're safe, Daniels. But we have information hearings, and sometimes with the agencies will present reports to us, things like that. But, uh, and so it'll change, and it'll say 2017 interim or something like that. But anyway, so right now it's that 2017 regular session. We don't need to change the session. Maybe if we do later. Okay. So I just clicked on the second little icon there, and that says bills there. And so you can look up bills in a couple different ways. So one of them is bill sponsors, right? So if you were looking, if you didn't know 719, but you're like, hey, what's that Boquist bill or something like that, you can look that up there uh, through his, his bills there. So Some, you can't find all anti-gun bills. You just search for Kotak. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. She's probably, she, you wouldn't be guaranteed that she would be a co-sponsor. Go down the list. So um, anyway, yeah. so um, I keep calling it Cotex. Yeah. So we're gonna um, we're gonna um, we're gonna we're looking at water meters. I like the I like the idea of water meters, right? Okay. So um, so I I don't know that there's like there's maybe one guy who's in the legislature who's like the the water meter guy or something like that, but there's mm -hmm. not. So we can't look that up by the bill sponsor or anything like that, right? Or the, we we don't know the bill number, right? If we knew the bill number, right? So we could do seven nineteen and then. This is good, and if I click go there, it's going to give me 719, but it's also going to give me 2719. So it's every bill that the number has 19 in it, right? Mm. Now I could have typed in SB space 719, I don't, and then it would go directly there. But anyway, so that's how you can, that's how you look up a bill, and we'll go look at the bill in a second here. But there's a thing uh, I think I'm on this. This is the sponsors, right? Here, and so with with the sponsors, we could type in uh, Nearman, right? And uh, go. Did I spell my own name right there? Oh yeah, <laughs> right. And so, so you can find all the bills that I was the chief sponsor of, and I hope I'm not going to embarrass myself by having too many of them. Good lord. 
Oh, oh come on, give me a copy some slides. That's pretty sweet. So <laughs> that you're willing to put your name on. No, so these are these are my bills. These okay, are my yeah. bills. So we have two levels of sponsorship. One of them is the chief sponsor, and that's when you say, I pretty much you say, I wrote the bill. This is my idea, or this is the idea that I'm peddling for someone else. And so I had one that I peddled for the. Thirty-four um, twenty-six. The, what the heck was that? The, the uh, uh, concrete and aggregate people. Thirty-four twenty-six. Where's that? Go up, 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 up. Next two. That one right there. Ready? This one? Yep. What does it say? Thirty-four. Allows what the hell? Yeah. Expand on continuous bridge acquired in school after school. Um, so I had a bunch of education bills there, okay. and uh, they, uh, that were kind of uh, combination education and land use. Um, that represents. So, uh, so those are the ones that I was the chief sponsor on. So you would expect that I would know a lot about those bills there. That would be that, that would be uh, something that you would expect. Then they have a thing of that I was just a regular sponsor of, and this is just somebody else's bill that I thought was a good idea. And so uh, Daniels wasn't looking. You didn't see how far I scrolled to go through. Yeah. This. But, uh, but anyway, so I have quite a few of those, and and uh, um, I, I like to, to co-sponsor bills. That's fine. Of things that are good ideas out there. Most of those never saw the light of day. Sometimes I do it. Uh, there's a bill that's kind of a good idea, but maybe I wouldn't have peddled it or anything like that. But I'm kind of brown nosing the committee chair or something like that. So I'm on the I'm on the housing and human services committee, and Aly Alyssa Kenny Geyer is on that committee. So uh, if anybody knows me, I'm kind of a land use guy. I wanna I wanna roll back a lot of the land use laws in Oregon. Not completely, because I don't want a guy building a plutonium dump next to my house. But we, but right now, um, it, it's illegal to use land in Oregon, m most of the land in Oregon, for what's the highest and best use of land. And that causes a lot of economic troubles in our state. So I'm kind of a, let's let's pale, pale it back a little bit. Uh, so um, uh, there were some housing bills that I was hoping that, that were, let's pale back the, let's make it easier to build housing on land. And I was hoping to do that. Um, and so I did some things, and I would never co-sponsor something that I didn't believe in or that I thought was wrong or anything like that. But I, I will admit that I did try to brown nose Alyssa Kenny Geyer by do, uh, doing some of that. There were some other ones where she had asked me to, if I would write a note to the uh, chairman of Ways and Means saying that I supported some, uh, some spending bills on housing there. And I also did that. That wouldn't be something that I would have done on my own, but I did that to brown nose her in hopes that she would move some alone. of the, the legislation. There was one I thought was a cool bill, and what it was was uh, it said that any school district can build affordable housing on land that they own, and you don't have to go through any kind of land use thing like that. They can build affordable housing on that, but in, in order to live in the affordable housing, you had to work at the school district, so you had to kind of be, it, that was your give back, whatever. And I really I really liked that because it, um, it was a way to, to take ownership. Keep, keep costs down. No, 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 no. no, no, no. It, it would be like, like uh, it would be just like welfare housing, but it would keep costs down, and it would, it was, but uh, it was a way to do a welfare payback. In other words, would, so that's one of my problems with welfare is you just get stuff, and there's no, you don't have to do any community service or anything like that. So mm. I really like that bill. I was hoping to brown nose her to get that bill moved through committee. So I kind of sucked up, and that's that's kind of the stuff that happens there. How did it work out for you? Um, that bill did not move, so it didn't work out for me. So, um, I'm just curious. Yeah, I got a robot. I'll see you later. Okay, Brian. Yeah, good Brian, to see you. So, um, good to see you. Anyway, so that uh, so that so that's the kind of stuff that goes on there. I, I don't think I violated any of my principles. Like I said, I possibly um, I did some things that I wouldn't have done in my own initiative. But there's good ideas out there that I don't. I don't, that mind, I I don't have no problem if a legislator or a senator or whoever compromised me in the middle a little bit. As long as you don't sell your soul bottom yeah. foundation, right. that's all that And, and I, I, I feel I feel clean like I didn't you do gotta that. you got to have okay. a little bit to give and take. Okay, so there, so that's not, not all that useful. I, I, I use that a lot, the sponsorship part of that. Yeah, look up sponsors. A lot of times I know who's sponsored for me. So mm -hmm. um, if I go to bills again, I'm going to click on bills here. And... Right there. Ding, ding. Okay, yeah, so, um, so the... What does that say there? Bill sponsor. No, no, no. 
Bill okay, Tech. So, Bill Tech. There, so that's Bill Tech, sir. So we're going to look up water metering there. So if I, if I look up water, <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of junk in there. I could look up water metering. Water metering. I could look up meter. Yeah, meter. Right. So I'm going to look up meter just because that occurs to me. That'd be not that useful. So. M-A-T-E-R. And so there's all the bills that have the word meter in them. Now, it could, be, it could be parking meter, right? Water and so it might be irrelevant to what I'm doing. <laughs> I like that. So, so, um, uh, but there, there, might be that, there might be that in there. So, so that's a manageable list. That's a, a way to go through that. Okay. I want to I change gears here just a little bit. And I want to talk about another little trick, and I use this trick uh, myself here, um, and uh, so, um, uh, hang on just a second here, is, uh, um, can I buy a vowel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so, and now everybody, everybody here uh, hates lobbyists, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to get our money. Capital money Club. Money. Okay. You what? Capital Club. Yeah. So this is Oregon Capital Club, and what this is is this is the this is like the the, the Oregon State Lobbyists um, webpage here, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I can do here is, and I'm having trouble seeing there. Remember is I can, list? Yeah. List. Is I want to do. Um, Remember list, client list, clients by industry. Yeah. yeah clients by industry. Is that, is that what that Go is? Back. Back. Right there. Okay. Bye. 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 All right, so let's say we want to look for trucking. We want to know all the bills having to do with trucking or something like that. And we, don't, we know that there's probably some sort of association of Oregon truckers or something like that. We don't have any idea what it's called or anything like that. But we can, we can uh, look here and we can That's say... The buy directory. The what? Can you buy, buy a membership? Directory. What is it, 20 bucks a year? 20 bucks no, no, a year. you can just go to this, this website. And there it is. Number search. search. Go down. Clients Remember, buy industry. Buy industry. Client by industry is the third one down. Okay. And right there. Oh, yeah. Client by industry. Okay. Yeah, let's look at that one. And uh, so we have we have all these. And so if I type in the word truck here, <coughs> it's going to just search for for this. So this does this seem like like too much work to do or anything? Hey, I'm, I'm sure JB Hunt, Walmart's involved were under CT Systems Incorporated, but we know how that works. Matter of fact, transportation. Yeah, because trucking was probably so cheap. Right from so you got TR transportation. Now we have T R A N S. There we go. Search. Oh, okay, there we go. And then is there like AAA, a AAA, I, Oregon, Idaho, Alaska yeah. Airlines, Alliance Automotive Manufacturing. Transportation is Airlines. Yeah, that's a railway. Riders of Oregon. Where? What? Motorcycle Riders of Oregon. Up, All right, let's up, do that. That just sounds up, more fun. Up, up, right there. Yeah. Right, right, okay, right, Motorcycle right. Riders of Oregon. Mm -hmm. So we're changing now. We're not going to do trucking. We're going to do motorcycle. Sorry about that. Anyway, so, uh, All right, so, so now we know Now we know the Motorcycle Riders of Oregon, right? Okay, there's, oh, the, there's, the, uh, there's the lobbyist for uh, Motorcycle Riders of Oregon, right? And so I'm now... I'm on this bill. So, what? I'm in for this bill. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're in for all those people, hey, all the different hey, hey. reasons, right? So That's better than trucking. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so now, so th what was the name of that organization again? Motorcycle Riders of Oregon. Truckers Association here. So uh, did I get or, uh, Oregon Truckers Association? Right, yeah, yeah. Just because, because I. All right. So now we're back on trucking here. So, knows so okay. So now here's the Oregon Truckers Association, right? And then um, somewhere on there, they're going to have a thing that says like what their legislative agenda. Advocacy. Yeah, that's probably what I want. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me. Uh, Third number three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where's your arrow? We'll guide you. So advocacy, right I've done that. What, what do I get that's doing? Advocacy, I've legislative updates. Find your legislative updates. Yeah, third, the third thing down there is legislative updates. And one more up. Yeah, right legislative there. updates. 
Okay. Let's see what it has. Ah, there we go. And so now I've got a list of bills that the Oregon Truckers Association cares about, right? So I can talk about SB 55701 or HB 4055, right? And so, so that's a way to find out is I'm using that industry association to go and look at... Yeah. speed? So, uh, yeah. So, and so that will get you... And th they will do comprehensive... They have paid people who are going through and saying, go find every bill, every, and I mean every, or you're going to be fired, every bill that has to do with trucking or whatever. And don't miss one, and don't come back to me and tell me you missed one, or you're sorry or whatever, because that's why you get paid the big bucks, because you're a lobbyist for Oregon Truckers Association. Right? So, so that's a good way to go and find every bill, is go find an industry association that's already done the work for you. <laughs> and they did that work, and they worked hard on it, and they want you to know that that's the right way. To what the hell do you need $250,000 for? 5701 and probably $250,000 on a truck to drive in revolving loan fund. Can I, get a, can I buy a loan to get me a truck? Apparently. I'll haul cattle right now. That's like, that like will buy like one truck though, right? I'm not even a $50,000 rig. Look up SB1008. Oh. You might I can buy the nine hundred thousand. Let's see if, let's see if okay. SB, does anybody see SB1008 up there? There's talk about the You know what? Um, I think that, I think that what happened, because I remember looking at this and I remember looking for it, and it's not in there. You know what happened is, and we, we talked about this, that bill got neutered so bad that it, it's a genderless bill now. Well, and, and it was so quiet, they weren't aware. Same with the miners and aggregates, but the Oregon Associated Loggers were the only advocacy group that really knew by the time we were at the second hearing. It, it, so, um, so maybe if I went to the Oregon Loggers Association, that I might, I might find it there in their list of inter interesting goods. Okay. So that is, uh, I'm not navigating all that well because I can't read that screen very well. But, uh, but anyway, so, um, but, but that's one way to go to, to find that stuff. So um, anyway, so I want to go back to the, to the oldest website now. Okay, so another way to find that, to find bills is, and again too, this is because people, they want to push this, they want to push this button all the time. They, they don't know the bill number, they don't know the bill sponsor or anything like that. They say, I want to know all the bills that have to do with blah, 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 or whatever, something like that. Well, one of the things that we can find, blah, 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 is in committees, right? So, so the bills get assigned to committees. Now, there's one little caveat here. So, um, not this last session, but the session before, I was on the Consumer Protection Committee, Commission, mm -hmm. committee. and uh, they actually did away with that committee, because I guess consumers are all protected now. But uh, um, anyway, so um, I was on the Consumer Protection Committee. Now, Brian Clem was the chair of the Agriculture Committee, and he had some bills that he would not let go through the Agriculture Committee for whatever reason. So they decided, damn that Clem, well we're going to take these bills that are actually agriculture bills and we're going to assign them to the Consumer Protection Committee because we know that chair will let them through, right? So sometimes you get monkey business with what, what, uh, what committee the, the bill was assigned to, but for the most part, if it's a transportation bill, it goes to the Transportation Committee. Now we even had, so I was, I'm also on the Housing and Human Services Committee this year. We had some bills that came through our committee there that didn't really have to do with housing. It had to do with uh, yes. no land, land use or something like that. So the veteran stuff we took. And we all have a hearing on the house, housing called rent control on the Earth Committee. Mm -hmm. yep. All those bills came through my committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so uh, um, so uh, it's possible that a bill gets assigned to the wrong committee, and if that happens, the committee will usually will pass it with no recommendation to the proper committee. So yeah. What's the stack on that committee? What's so it's the same as every other committee. Is the there's the Four, the number of R's and then that same number plus one for D's there. Oh, yeah. And so that's that's required by uh, it's at least required by the House rules. I think it's required by the Constitution. Is that the committees have to be stacked um, in the same proportion of the legislature? Now that doesn't so there's sixty there's sixty people in the House. So and there's maybe like nine people on the committee. So the numbers don't always add up right. But the way that they deal with that, and, and uh, they really don't need any more than that. And many of the bills are party line bills, and they win by one vote. How about that, huh? <laughs> so they, because uh, uh, that's just the way, that's all they need. So they don't need to really stack their deck. Now, I want to put a little asterisk there. I'm going to go off on a little tangent on my own. There is one committee that I'm on that's not a legislative committee. It's a statutory committee, and it's the IT committee. And on that committee, there's three Republicans and three Democrats. And that's kind of cool. 
because uh, we, the, the Republicans can kill any bill that comes through that committee because um, you need to have a majority to pass the bill out of committee. So that causes two things. First of all, any bill that's possibly controversial doesn't go through that committee because they won't <laughs> let the Republicans kill it or whatever. Or, but uh, that there, was, there was two bills I can remember that, uh, that I actually had some influence on because of that. And so Nancy Nathanson, it's a joint committee, so there's two chairmen. There's a Senate chair and a House chair. They're both Democrats. And so Nancy Nathanson was the Democrat House chair of that committee. And I remember her coming up and groveling to me in the hallway for uh, one little thing on that bill there. And uh, so I let her have her thing there. Again, Obed Brown knows her so I can get my way on something else. And it's your job to ask me, how did that work out for me? <laughs> and, uh, how did that work out for you? It didn't work out all that well for me. So. Again? Uh, yeah, and then Somebody I'm, check. I'm <laughs> taking notes. So I'm taking notes on this stuff here. <laughs> so I'm try a different approach. Yeah. So, but uh, there, there was, so there was one that I did kill. And it, so they have right now the state CIO, the chief information officer for the state of Oregon, is under the authority of DAS, the Department of Administrative Services. And he wants to have his own agency. And they had a bill to give him his own agency. And I pretty much killed that. I said, now you can't have your own agency. Go get back in the ass. And did people brown nose you? To no, get their way? no, I don't think I've ever been brown nose. Okay. Lobbyists will come so up and suck up to them. Yeah, but well, <laughs> still lose. Yeah, I know. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so I, yeah, I'm working these things as best I can. We'll see. We'll, but the, there's payback. Will, payback will come someday. Oh yeah. But uh, don't worry. anyway, uh, so um, uh, anyway, so so that's one committee that is kind of cooler. All right. So now I clicked on committees, right? So there's three flavors of committees there. There's House, there's Senate, and there's Joint, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, everybody's favorite committee was the Joint Committee on Marijuana, right? But <laughs> 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 it's not that funny. Actually, to me, it's not that funny because everybody was like, oh, I don't know. Order 76 times now. I didn't get it until you started coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, uh, so these are the so these are the Joint Committees here. Notice here is, uh, what does that ways say? And means. Ways and means. Ways and means. And then, so these are all the ways and means subcommittees here. So, so remember, so state legislator does three things. Can anybody tell me what those three things are? Ha, I told you there's going to be no quiz. Here's the quiz. What are the three things that the state legislature does? Pass laws. Pass laws. Pass laws. <laughs> Ceremony. Money. Ceremony. Money. And, and uh, money, yeah. And, so, and appropriate money. money. So this is where we appropriate money. And so... Each, so there's about, uh, it depends how you count them, but let's just say, I'm going to say a little bit over 100 state agencies, right? And so you have, I want to say, it looks like six or eight uh, legislative subcommittees there. So you do the math, and that's maybe like 20 uh, agencies per legislative subcommittee there. And so uh, every, so they all, all get, so if you want to know, so um, like if you care about the Department of Aviation, if you care about their budget, you could go here to probably Transportation Economic Development. Not probably, but actually, because I know I sit on that committee. And so you'll see the Department of Aviation's budget there. And um, if you care about the Oregon Health Authority's budget, there's a committee on uh, what, human services or something like that. And yeah, so, so you'll, you'll get that there. So you can find, find those, those budgets there if that's what you care about there. So uh, just about me, I care deeply about budgets. And as a matter of fact, uh, the Speaker of the House uh, assigns everybody to every committee, the chairman, the vice chairman, the members of the committee, everybody gets assigned by the Speaker of the House. So in a short session, or in a long session, you have a half an hour meeting with the Speaker of the House where you go to beg for what committees you want to be on. I was right? wondering, I was going to ask, do you just get arbitrarily assigned by that no. person? No, no. So, do you have a... So, there's, so the number one principle, the first principle is, is um, how can I screw you to keep you from getting reelected, right? <laughs> or if you're on her team, how can I help you to get you reelected, right? And so if you're Newt Bueller and you're a doctor, what committee are you not going to be named to? Okay. Healthcare, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, so anyway, now if you're Mike Nearman, you're in a fairly safe Republican seat. No, probably no Democrats going to take my seat. Probably Republicans might because I get in fights with them all the time. But uh, but no Democrat is probably going to take my seat, and so she doesn't really care about me. So then the next the next biggest principle then is what expertise do you have in your life? So um, as Marcy knows, I'm I'm a tech support guy. And, uh, and then since she, she, she kind of lost track of me for a while, but I went and got a degree in computer science, and, um, and now I'm a software engineer. Well, now I'm a legislator, but, I'm, but, but, but I previously was a software engineer. So it makes sense to have me on the IT committee, right? Mm -hmm. So when I go to beg for committees there, so I'll tell you, when you're, when you're on a policy committee, so the policy committee would be all the ones that uh, Daniels cares about, so like Judiciary Committee or the Health Care Committee or the Transportation mm -hmm. Committee. Those are all policy committees there. When you're on a policy committee, it's Democrat versus Republican, 
I'm a Republican, and that means I always lose. When you're on a Ways and Means Committee, it's legislator versus agency, and the odds are a lot better there. So, um, so I, I like that. And then one of the other things that I think that's kind of my mission, the thing that gets me up in the morning and all that, is not SB 719, although that's important, and that will get me at least to brushing my teeth in the morning, whatever. But um, the thing that really gets me up in, in the morning and gets me motivated is reducing the size and scope of government. So I have to say, is, um, I'll, I'll say this, and I hope this doesn't get taken the wrong way, but like Senate Bill 719 and Senate Bill 941, 941 was the one that required if you transfer a firearm to someone, you have to go get a background check, and 719 was the one that created an extreme risk protection order that your someone in your household or or lawyer can can turn you into a judge and say, hey, we think this guy's a risk to himself or others, and so we need to take away all his firearms. So nice both of those too. both of those are bad bills. Yeah. But I'll tell you what is um, at the end of the day, I can still transfer a firearm to Bob, and I can still probably keep my firearms until my my wife or my ex girlfriend or something like that wants to call up and but or, but what but um, what's really pernicious about government is every single day they're taking money out of my wallet and and uh, oftentimes using it for things that are inimical to what I stand for. $37 million dollars a month from people that's not legally in our country and, get, and then they go through and pass a bill to kill babies, but people that are trying to have babies that consider that reaches up to hell. Now how in the hell can you explain that to me? So, so that kind of stuff. So anyway, so, um, so I, I prefer ways to use them. I told the speaker, I said, if you want, you can take away every one of my policy committees except for IT, I like that committee. But even the IT one, that's kind of a ways and means committee. Um, it, it deals a lot with spending. So, but uh, anyway, so, so here's all the committees here. And so if we want to know, like, transportation or something like that, you could go to transportation here, right? And so what we're going to do is let's do this here. So let's go to, let's go to the House Judiciary Committee, right? And uh, yeah, the Senate. Um, is that the Senate? Okay, House. And then help me find judiciary here. Right there. Down, down, down. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, House Judiciary Committee there. And then... What I've got here is, a, I mean, so on this page here, this just shows um, everybody who's a, a member of that committee there, and then some of the staff people, and there, and then one thing I want to stop here, and I think it's on this page here, is, uh, yeah, so there's a H. Judd exhibit email here, and so what you can do is you can send testimony to the committee there, and you can send a letter saying, hey, I'm Mike Nierman. It's kind of considered not good form for legislators to, to do this, because this is a process that's kind of made for the public here. But you guys are all members of the public. You say, I'm Steve Pickering, and I think that Senate Bill 719 is a bad deal or something like that. Just send them an email. You, be, you don't need to get, don't use all caps, and don't get violent, and <laughs> whatever. And just, uh, you know, and just, but just tell them what you think and why you think it, and put it in there. And that will be part of the permanent record for that bill there, and uh, that you oppose that there. And uh, um, we're, uh, it came up in the last week we were here about, ah, do legislators even care about that stuff? If there's not very much testimony, there, uh, if, well, first of all, if there's no testimony, then I figure, and most of my colleagues would figure, I figure nobody cares about this bill. And so I can just vote however I want. And so shame on you if you try to hold me accountable to this. If nobody gave any testimony to it, or maybe nobody gave any negative testimony to it, or nobody gave any positive testimony to that, I don't know if that's really possible. So the, if I do that, I'm going to just kind of vote my conscience. And if you come after me, I'm going to say, hey, where were you? You know, whatever. And so if there's, a, if, if there's some negative testimony, maybe not very much, but some negative testimony, I'll read that and I'll take that into account, especially if it's thoughtful testimony. Whatever. If there's a huge bill like 719 and everybody in our grandmother between Tokyo and, and New York City is going to write a letter in or something like that, I'm probably not going to read every single one of them. But the, but the cumulative weight of, gosh, there was 80% of the people were negative on this. That's going to weigh heavily on well, me, Mike, however I do I'll this. I'll address that 719 hearing. I mean, the problem is this. We got loaded up with people outside our own damn state that don't know the ass from the hole in the yeah, ground. And yeah, I'm going to call yeah, them yeah. to see it yeah. again. Which, which is why this, this is bothersome. Okay, so which is why that very last thing on there is important because you don't have to, you don't have to go to the meeting you don't have to know when the meeting is. Well, you kind of have to beat the meeting, whatever. The, the, you need to beat the work session. Um, so l last week we talked about there's a there's a public hearing for the, every bill will have a public hearing, and then every bill will have a work session. 
So the public hearing is just what it sounds like. The public has an yeah, op uh, opportunity to testify. Um, as some of you know who testified on gun bills, that's not unlimited. We don't sit there and let everybody go on as long as they want. And no, we don't even always get to everybody. Two minutes and three minutes. Ha after a, while, after a while, pretty much it's all been said. And so we'd say, all right, it's getting to be repetitive now. So we're just going to cut it off. And so some people don't get to testify. But if you send something to that email there, that will become part of the permanent record there. Just the same as if you did testify. Now, if you sit there and you testify, and I'm on that committee, I kind of have to listen to you. I guess I could be surfing Facebook while you're <laughs> there test testifying. Whatever. There's one legislator I know who's a famous Facebook yeah, surfer. Yeah, he does all but, the uh, time. Anyway, but, uh, um, but, but I'm, I'm kind of forced to at least pretend like So, whatever. If you send to that email, I don't have to read it. But, but uh, you will, it will be part of the record, and, you, and um, it will affect that. So, uh, so I encourage you to do that if you have an opinion on a bill. And you can just send an email. Just click on that. It'll open up your email, and you just type in and say, "I think this is a bad idea, and I think it's why." Or you know, so, yeah. So that email that goes to everybody on the committee. No, no, it doesn't. It goes to the committee administrator, and then they make it part of the exhibits for that bill. And I'll show you that in a second. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll actually look at some of those. So that's why I was, I was going to try to look up 719 because 719 was like a big, huge, controversial bill where kind of like everything happened. So yeah, yeah. Um, how much weight does it have? It. Uh, as being one of their constituents versus one, uh, somebody who's not in, in, in their district. Oh, yeah. so, so the question is, uh, how important is it if you're in my district or whatever? And um, I kind of I care if you're in my district. Um, uh, but, you know, mostly, um, I, um, and I, think, I don't think every legislator is like this, but I kind of look to try to, I, I kind of look to try to do what's best for the state of Oregon and not so much for my district, you know? Um, so, like, you, you're in my district, but you have trucking issues, and I'm looking at those in the scope of what's the right thing to do, not like, um, oh, you're from my district, so i got to suck up to you so I get your vote. I mean, I kind of care about your vote, but, uh, but, I, but I would rather do what's right for the state of Oregon. So, um, and I think legislators you'll find have different, some of them will be more trying to, to feather the nest of their district or whatever, and I'm, I'm not really like that. That might cost me money. But you yeah. the majority, that, that especially in the opposition party, they don't they don't see in the areas that they talk about when these various bills that we come up that may affect in the long term. But they'll listen to everybody outside our yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. I'm sick of it. Yeah. If I wasn't living damn California, I would have stayed there 24 damn years ago. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I hear you. I am pissed. Okay. Uh, uh, so anyway, so there's all the people in the district. Email the, that email there, so remember I went to the committee page there, and that's the committee thing there. So there, um, and I think there's a way to get to that for the bill. I can't, yeah, I want to, track the bill too, or yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Okay, so now I'm going to click on this. So this is like the committee homepage here, and then this is assigned measures here, right? So I just clicked on that, and then this is all the bills that got assigned to that committee. Now, it just occurs to me, 719 never went to the House Judiciary, did it? No, nope. went to House Good Rules, stuff, right? Yeah. Went to yeah, the yeah, rules. So they, they played games with it. Yeah, yeah, darn it. Okay, well, I'm going to stay here. Whatever. Okay, you notice on the right sidebar there, there's the schedule of the committee, right? And so um, so that's all the committee hearings there. If I click on the little arrow there, that will show me during that day, those are the bills that we heard there. And there's so there's some little abbreviations there. There's like uh, uh, WRK and uh, P. P A W. Uh, uh, oh, is, it, is that? Oh, I can't read that. Can read me those. Um, but so uh, you'll have a um, a uh, a work session. Yeah. And uh, 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 P A W. I think that was what. P A W. That, that's a public hearing and possible work session there. So sometimes they'll do that. They'll say we've got this bill. We don't think it's all that controversial. We're just going to have a public hearing. And if everything goes well, then we'll just have a work session right away. So work session is when we voted out of committee, right? So you go and you say, hey, we have this bill, and all we're trying to do is we have some Department of Revenue code that we're just trying to sync up with the IRS code just so that when you claim this deduction in Oregon, you can claim the same deduction on your federal taxes. They do a lot of that. So we just have this bill. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay, all right, good. All right, so now we'll vote on it. And the committee will vote, yes, 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 yes. yes. No. Okay. I mean, yeah, Daniel's always Mr. No. <laughs> All right, so we're going to vote that. So that would be like a public hearing. But sometimes it blows up. 
Okay, does anybody have any problem with that? Yeah, Daniels has a problem with that. Yeah, that's, we don't want to align with the federal tax code because we hate the IRS or blah, 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 blah. But, okay, Daniels, all right, whatever. Okay, so now we'll, we'll stop and we won't have the work session because now there's controversy and we want to give people a time to think about it and ruminate on it. And then we're going to come back and vote your ass down, right? And so, <laughs> anyway, so that's what happens. Um, anyway, yeah. so that's how you can find it. The little, the little arrow here is where you can go to the video of that committee hearing. You can go see the whole video of that, and boy, I'll tell you, it's exciting. Some committees are more exciting than others. Well, they purposefully make things that they know are controversial not available to the public. No, there's no way to do okay. that, really. Okay. So, oh, I call them well, <laughs> let, me, let me talk, let me, let me talk about, so let me talk about games that can be played on that. Okay. So um, at the end of the session, they, so ordinarily the timelines, they have to, they have to give notice of a, of a public hearing or notice of a work session. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why the, the required notice for a work session, because there's nothing you can do about it anyway. So, um, but there's a, but the public hearing, uh, whatever, and the notice is, uh, I think it's three days. No, and one hour. <laughs> one hour or something. So, I so, so, no, 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 hang on, I'll get to that in a second. No, it's three days, and, yeah, and three days is kind of a, a reasonable number, I think, because yeah. we, we have to get on with our business there. Yeah. And if you live in, in uh, Boardman, and you want to come testify on that bill, now that might be putting you in a little bit of a bind because you got to kind of get off time off of work and all kinds of. But but come on, we got to get on with our work here too. So I don't know, three days is not all that oppressive, but whatever. And if you really are caring about the legislation and all that, then you would have other people that care about it, and somebody could come and get the day off of work or whatever. So now what happens at the end of the session? They say, okay, we're getting close to the end of the session, and they have a thing called signy die, which is the end of the session. Signy die is imminent, and so. Then the t deadlines go down to an hour, and then so then that's when you get screwed there. Now, so sometimes we're just saying, look, we're just doing an hour notice just because we need to just get through. We need to get out of here. But sometimes they're actually putting legislation in there that they purposely don't want you. Oh, you live in Boardman. We have an hour to get to Salem. Oh, that's funny. It's a five-hour drive. But I don't know if you just. You know, maybe you do approve of the 90 mile an hour speed limit or the 300 mile an hour speed limit. Or they do like they did the day before 719 hearing. The hearing's supposed to be on Tuesday the 18th. Yeah. They move it to the 17th, and then they go through and add amendments of 30 to 50 pages to it. Yeah. And then the, the morning of the hearing, they add another 15 pages of amendments where they've gotten stuff. But Mike, in situations cool. like that, isn't that where you would be able to go and, and utilize the tool that you were kind of showing us and shoot an email so that you have permanent record? Although I would not have been able to make that commute in, in, in yep. warp yeah. speed manner, I can at least go to my my web the website and yeah. utilize that and say, yes. you know what, fine. I would like to yep. say, and it's now point of record. Yep. Okay. And, and, uh, so i got to say, and here's another thing, too. So anything in politics or legislation, the answer to any question of, like, what should I do, the answer is always the same, and the answer is always all of the above. And so what you want to do, if you don't want 719 to pass, you need to drive down there and testify in person. You need to click on that thing and email. You need to go to Mike Nierman's office. If you have the time, you need to go to all 60 offices, all 90 offices, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh, all, I do. All of I do what yeah. 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 So, um, so th that will be the most effective thing to do. So now you're, you're probably a normal human being. You have limited resources. Correct. You live in Boardman. You can't get to the legislature. You know, maybe you could get to the legislature on three days' notice. You got to work. Eh, you know, whatever. So maybe you can only do the email thing, and then maybe you email the actual people on the committee. Yeah. Remember we had the list of people on the committee there, so their email addresses are available there. As well. Yeah. And you can, and that's effective too. And so the people that are on the committee are going to know the most about it. Okay. So I get sometimes I get people that email me and they're like, hey we have this thing where they're going to change the insurance code. It's going to affect health care in this way or something like that. And I'm like, gosh, I'm not on the health care committee. I have no idea what you're talking about. Or if you're like some shill for the insurance agency or if you're actual a grieved consumer, or I have no idea what's going on here, and so I'm going to depend on my, my other colleagues who are on the health care committee to do that. So those are going to be the guys that know the most about it. Now, one thing I, I learned is if at the last minute it changes to a different committee, like I, I brought my testimony the, the last time in person, and, and I handed it to him, but then after speaking with Mike, I realized, oh, it's in a different committee now since, you know, within the last hour, so I went back and made sure they get one. The other members of that oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They cut money. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Well, let's notice. Uh, so, <laughs> so I think that, that they don't do this kind of monkey business very often. Okay. Um, and I think mostly, I think mostly the reason they do the monkey business, that they, they, they are, um, they're the party in power. They can pass whatever they want. 
you know, they, they can't pass revenue measures because they need a uh, three-fifths majority. But 719, they can pass that. They don't need Mike Nierman. They don't need to be nice to Mike Nierman. They don't need my vote. They don't need to be my friend. They don't need me at all. And they don't need you. And so they can just pass this. And so I think mostly what they're trying to do is they're trying to just say, look, you're, you're a nice, sweet lady and everything like that, but I just don't really want to put up with your crap. And so that's really what's going on here. I, I don't think they're trying to control any process. They don't, they're, they're getting the outcome that they would get anyway. So I can sit here all day for the next four hours and put up with your crap and then pass the bill. Or I can just say, no, thank you very much. I don't want to put up with your crap and then pass the bill. Right. So that, that's really kind of what's going on. One question, Mike. Is there any way we can go from this point, if the lowest was set up right, we can see who's the lobbyist. Is there any way we can see the lobbyists off of that page cross reference? To the money's oh, to you the, just, I want to you cut just, hands off. You just picked a huge I scab. Want it, chop. You just picked a huge scab. Okay, so I got to tell you, is uh, so one of my, I want to say, probably, he's probably my best buddy on the Democrat side, um, and you guys are going to hate my guts after I say who this is, but it's Dan Rayfield. And, uh, Jesus, <laughs> anyway, so he's out. Up. Anyway, so Dan Rayfield is from Corvallis, and I kind of, now he's not really my best buddy. He's a trial lawyer, man. Those are icky people. Is anybody in the room a trial lawyer? <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Right so, you what? We're working with one right now. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, so don't you agree they're icky people? Yeah, anyway, so, so Dan Rayfield, he had this bill, and what it is, it's the lobbyist accountability bill. And it does almost exactly what you said. It's they, so it wouldn't be linked up with this site, but it would be on the Oregon Government Ethics Commission site. And you'd go there, and they would have to list all the bills that they lobbied for or against there. And so... That, and uh, I was a co-sponsor of it. And I wouldn't mind that. What's so, wrong with that? I'll take that's that. That's a great that. bill. That's yeah. a great idea. And so um, now some now uh, so you know who killed that bill? Courtney. Is, no, it's your girlfriend, um, Jenny Burdick. And uh, so I rather go. Anyway, so uh, so Senator Burdick killed that bill. And uh, anyway, so we're coming back with that in the short session there. And I will be a chief co-sponsor of that one. So you'll look for that bill again. And actually, that bill it. Um, it was in a stronger form, so you had to say whether you were lobbying for or against or sometimes neutral on a bill. And that's important because sometimes you'll be against a bill and they'll fix it to the point where you say, okay, I'm not against it anymore, I'm neutral on it. And that's kind of an important distinction to make. Neutral is different than I don't care about the bill, <laughs> whatever. Neutral is I care about the bill and you have it to a point where it's tolerable for me. That kind of means something to us. But anyway, um, but then it got neutered to say you only have to report if you lobbied on the bill. Oh, you don't say which way you wanted. I didn't like that. So um, anyway, but um, we got called so, two hundred thousand dollars. So if that doesn't go in the short session, that seems like something that would be pretty easy to get passed. Yeah, like, like an initiative. Good. You're talking about citizens' yeah. initiative. Yeah. Because I, I think there's a lot of liberals that are like, oh, money in politics. Yep. Yeah. That one's a pretty easy one to, to, to go. You know, the problem the problem I would say is that um, I always go back to Joe Sixpack, and Joe Six's job, and he wants uh, yeah. he wants uh, the roads fixed, and he wants good schools and all this kind of stuff. And when you, you start to get a little bit into the tall weeds when you talk about lobbyists and this, right. and you got to explain to him. But but it's it's not anything that anybody's going to be against. I mean, Joe, right. nobody nobody. The only people that are going to be against it are, are actual lobbyists and, right. and legislators who are friends with lobbyists, right? So, so, um, so that, that's all of that's probably like maybe maybe a thousand people in the entire universe that are against that bill, as opposed to four million people in the state of Oregon. So, yeah. so you're, you're right. That that's that's a possibility there. I, I would say if there's if there's some legs on it. it so it is eight o'clock. So. Um, that's when I advertise the end time of this. This would be. The end I'm, time. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to blather on or whatever. But if you have to leave, whatever, like Les has to leave. He's got good transportation things he's working on. But uh, then uh, that's fine. I'm okay if you leave. But uh, I'll continue to blather on until the last person falls asleep or leaves, I show up uh, dies. I in his office at 10 minutes to five. He will stay there until 5:30 <laughs> at the cap. This is a good. So, uh, uh, we're not meeting here next week because next week we're off. But uh, anyway, but then the week after that, I think. Um, so anyway, so you, um, so that that lobbyist bill, would, it would be much easier to have the legislature pass it. That, that would, that that's them going to get through. I'm just saying, if they won't do it, then maybe we can force the issue. Yeah, and so so that would be a good thing. Okay, so um, thank you. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, just click on a bill here, and uh, just. So, so this is this is the page for the bill here, and what? Uh, um, okay, good. Very nice meeting. Thank, Thank you very much, guys. Very important. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.
good to see you guys. So in the so upper standing, baby. So this this is the most important feature here is in the upper right hand corner there, and it says, what does it say? It says, uh, follow this bill, right? Oh, if you click good. on that, they have a thing, and anytime that bill something happens to that bill, they'll send you a little email saying something happened to that bill. Sometimes the things happening to the bill are not very consequential, like oh that bill just got assigned to the. Uh, transportation committee or something and like that. And you can get it on your phone when they do those yeah. bills. Even so so I have one right now. I have only yeah. one of those left, and that's on House Bill 719 because I'm, gonna, I'm on a, a member of a group that's possibly going to refer that to a referendum on that, and it hasn't right. been signed by the governor yet. How do you do the referendum, though? That's my big thing. If I need to go down to your office and have you show me how. Good. Uh, and I'll, I'll, uh, that's actually going to be the next class. It's going to be initiatives Is and referendums. Is it going to be too late within um, 30 days? Um, no, 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 no. Okay. So, but don't don't worry. Uh, there's other people that are going to do that. But uh, we certainly need your participation on that. But uh, but but anyway. But the, the work will get done. But I want to. I do want to talk about the process, and not just for that bill, just in general, the whole process, and not just for referendum, but for um, uh, doing initiatives and constitutional changes, everything. So I want to talk about that. That's that's the next class that we're going to do. So anyway, but that's the that's your most potent thing there is to click on that. So when you have a bill like 1008 that you care about, you click on that and you tell them that's the bill you want to follow. And you'll get some stuff with, oh, that bill just, it just passed out of the House Committee on Transportation and passed to the floor. And then, oh, it just got scheduled for a third, for a second reading or whatever. Uh, that's no big deal. Okay, now third reading. Well, that's going to the House floor. We're going to vote on it, whatever. But, you, but what you care about is when it's going to have a public hearing, right. those kinds of things. So, um, so you want to get in early on, on those things. So um, anyway, so that's, that's what that's useful for. And so the, the kinds of things that you'll get notified on are, what does this say in this little bar? Scheduled here? events. Scheduled events. No, no, no. What's this say? Measured, Measured history. history. Yeah, that, so these are the things. So this is what happened to this bill here. And apparently it didn't really go anywhere. But uh, you would get notifications on every one of those that, that it happened. So we got uh, got a public hearing, we got a work session, and uh, and went sure, to Ways and means, means, and then died in Ways and Means. So that that wasn't all that exciting of a bill, but those are the things that you would get uh, notified of, and uh, so uh, on that. So uh, that's that's kind of how to follow the bill there, and how to get notifications on on that stuff. Okay, so I think that's about all I have for tonight, but I'm happy yeah. to just answer questions or blather on or go do this I, stuff. I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the possibility is of, of the state splitting? And, and and I guess, I mean, the state, frankly, the East kind of wants to get away from Salem. But I guess my question really would be, do you think we have the votes in the, in the House and the Senate here in the legislature to, to split the state? Because they have to vote on it. Mm -hmm. And, and it has to go to Congress, too. Well, Congress, yeah, I mean, that's a side so that, issue. No, that, the con Congress is going to die. So, first of all, it might die. The, the problem is is that no matter what, you're going to have winners and losers politically on that. Yes. First of all, if you split a state, you're going to create two new U.S. senators, first right. of all. You have and you're not going to create any more congressmen. You're going to create two new U.S. senators. Somebody's a winner and somebody's a loser on that. Don't tell me that that's a tie. Can you make that a tie? Because that's not, What are you going to do, split Oregon? Do you take... Oregon and Washington, west of the Cascades, and then east of the well, Cascades. Washington's well, working on it. They so, have a so you have, so you have, you, so you have uh, western Washington, western Oregon, Correct. and then right Washington, the Washington, right, which is the eastern part yeah. of the states there. So now you just created two new U.S. senators. What party are those senators in? Oh, they'll both be Republican. Oh, that's a great idea. I think I want to run for Congress and vote for that. Okay, so that's going to be. Yeah, a, I know. That's going to be a problem, though, because that's going to, that's going to be a problem to go through yeah. Congress there. So, and then the state except, of Washington. Except for right now, we the, have the state of Washington is dominated by what party? Olympia, which is Dem Democrat. Well, what party? Yeah, yeah, Democrat. And the state of Oregon is also dominated by Democrats. Right. And so, and are they going to let two new U.S. senators go in and and uh, nullify uh, what's her name but with the sneakers up in Washington? Uh, okay. Uh, Maria right. Cantwell. Cantwell, I know and, that was her name. No, it's the other one. What's her name? Oh, she's but, crazy. Huh? Yeah, the crazy lady there. And Jeff Merkley. Are they going to want to neutralize those guys? No, well, they I, think I, those guys are great. The, the reason I'm at because a little there's a little part of me that is wondering if they would just love the fact that they'd be able to do whatever the heck they wanted to with the valley at that point. Because if you get rid of you know ninety. 
80, 90 percent of the, the Republicans in our, you know, yeah. House, then they're so kind of like, now not going to be good for the Valley. Phil, Phil Post and Mike Nerman be the only Republicans. And I'm now. sorry, I'd be moving, I know. but you know, but, 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 but the is this: I understand what you're saying. I'm going to use this election for factual purposes. Forty-two percent east of the Cascades only voted. In a year that there was 275,000 less voters compared to the previous general election for governor and top office. Well, and I can tell you exactly why they didn't they vote. They didn't vote because, we, one thing, people have given up. Yeah. Number two, there's nobody's going to go over there and get the effort to get them off their ass. Well, people well, is living in their safe zone. But well, it's not affecting me. This is their mentality. Right. I went to that part of the state. I went to Southern Oregon. I went to Northern California. Even I, down there in I, my I, area. Right in Eastern up. Oregon, I know. And, but it's, you might see them come out knowing that they could have their actually have control. Because the reason they don't vote is because they don't feel like anybody over here gives a shit if, about it. If them. we had seventy-two percent, if we had sixty-five percent of people vote and, in last uh, election, anyway, for and I'll say the other thing we could have got rid of this damn gov. Um, That's five hundred forty thousand yeah. voters. So this is a little bit of inside sixty-five percent inside caucus baseball here, but um, that uh, at least I'll say that I feel this way because I feel like that um, there's Republicans in bright, screaming red districts in Oregon, really conservative right-wing districts that are way squishy and, and wiggly mm -hmm. and, uh, oh. and in Oregon. And, um, so, and from those places that you're talking about. There. Yes. And so, so um, I, the, if, yeah, if Republicans in those areas are demoralized, uh, that's very understandable. And as a matter of fact, I'm working on a couple of projects right now to kind of expose that. I mean, the um, best so example I've seen from southern, uh, southeast corner of Oregon is Dennis Lipka. He's been consistent. Yeah. He is one of us, yeah. and at the same time, he stood by when, the, when I went through the dens of wolves in the Senate Judiciary. He held his own, and he voted with his conscience, and I respect him for that mm -hmm. nature. But he had, in, Lake, in his county, 68% of his people in one little county, which is a speckle of an eye, vote for him. In a year that we could have got rid of this governor, 575,000 don't sound like much, but if 575,000 Republicans would get off their ass, we wouldn't have this piece of crap. And that represents 65% of our electorate. The reality in is a year that Puerto Rico will be a state and California will be northern and southern California at least a century before Oregon splits. Mm -hmm. And that's a reality. It, well, even but that, even Puerto that's Rico may be a state in the next two or three years. Three three years. years. <laughs> if, if, if you look at if you look at the uh, at the like uh, the post Civil War statehood admissions, right. huh? They always came in twos. Do you know why they came in twos? Because they said, okay, you get two senators and you get two senators because yours going to be Democrats and yours going to be Republicans. And so they always came in twos, like Kansas, yeah, Nebraska, Nebraska you know, Alaska, Hawaii. Alaska, Hawaii. They always came in twos, and that's why. And so. But we've had the, state splits before. Now, granted, yeah, not in recent history. Yeah, it, well, the state splits before, based on, Virginia on the Civil out. War, right? The only one was uh, was West Virginia. West and Virginia, Virginia and, and yeah, there was. That's the only one. Split off and that, that was part of Reconstruction. Idaho. So, so um, now w let, let's do this. What if we put together a deal of um, uh, uh, Washington gone or whatever the eastern. The Eastern Bloc. They're going for liberty. Yeah, whatever. And then, and then uh, the state of Jefferson. But I, I don't even think that. I think Jefferson is very likely to go Republican too. So I just, I don't. Oh, yeah, it would. So, be. Do you think so? Okay. Yeah. I, yeah so yeah, um, because other than I, Ashland, they're, they're, it's all conservative. Although what, even in Northern California, yeah, Northern it's Redding, Redding, okay, conservative. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, so I, I just, I don't, I don't think there's a way. So if you could find a way oh. to maybe, maybe like trade Puerto Rico for Washington or yeah. whatever or something like that. That that could happen. The deal yeah. could get struck for that. You so trade um, anything for Washington. So you what? Trade anything for Washington. No, no. We get we get. Uh, so um, the state of Washington would shrink to about the third of its size. The state of Oregon right. would shrink to about a third of its size. You'd create a new state, which would be. Eastern Washington and Eastern Oregon, right. and then admit that as a state and admit Puerto Rico. The Eastern Washington or Washington already has a bill for Now, now one, one thing if you do Puerto Rico is you're going to create new congressmen there, and so you need to take that into account. So that it's it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a of a you got to do some math there, and so that's the kind of deal that needs to be struck though. Is that kind of deal? Is there any initiative that you know right now where we can get back to a one county one vote? So so. Um, 
Yeah, so you're talking about, like, so there's been... Like electoral college, right? Yeah, right. So, like, do away with the Senate, the Oregon Senate, the, the way it's uh, appropriated right now, and just have every county send one senator there. Right. And the fact of the matter is, is that the United States Supreme Court has always struck down any plan that is not one man, one vote, um, which this would be, uh, which would, do, I mean, which would not be. Except for the electoral college, because the electoral college is defined in the or, in the U.S. Constitution. Right. So, so for instance, Multnomah County is going to get one senator. Sherman County is going to get one senator. Multnomah County has almost a million people in it. Sherman County has fifteen hundred people in it, and so that's not one. Man, that's not equal representation. And so the United States Supreme Court would throw that out. So uh, if we put it in our constitution. Yep. Yeah. We, we have, the federal government throws things out of our constitution. When was the last time the federal government threw something out of our constitution? 1873. No, 2014 was when the last time the federal government threw oh. something out of the Oregon Constitution. Measure 36, which said that marriage is between one man and one oh, woman. That's right. And the U.S. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court threw, or it was no, it was the, it was the nice Court of Appeals. Court. No, no, yeah. it, didn't, it was just federal court. Federal but, court. but it's the federal government threw that out of our constitution. So it's still in our Constitution, but it's not enforceable. Of course, according to Chris Ann Hall, we could probably nullify the Supreme Court. Yeah, it's an opinion yeah. based on all the time. Mike, let's talk about history a little bit, because uh, historically, very recently, our legislature was split right in two, Republicans and Democrats. 15, How did that happen, and what can we do to make it happen again? 2003. So, yeah, so, yeah I think Three, that, no, no, it's a... No, it was later than that. It was, it was five, two, yeah. so twelve. Was, yeah. Yes. Was twelve. That yeah. Was only recent. They didn't even split then. Yeah, it was a thirty-thirty in the right. House, and it was sixteen fourteen in the Senate, and and one of those Senate seats was won by like two hundred votes or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, uh, so I, I think oh, gosh, I think we're was Chuck Riley, wasn't but, it? but yeah. that's just a no. He was in the House. Yeah, like, what has changed? No, that was Senate. No, it was it was uh, Alan oh, DeBoer. Yeah, that's right. Alan De yeah. No, 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 no. You know who it yeah. was? It was Dave Dottering against uh, Alan Bates in okay. Southern Oregon. Oh, there okay. and and Dave Dottering lost by just a handful of votes. But, but what has changed, yeah. and what can we do to go back to yeah. that same so place? So that, that's a, that's a good thing. So what you know, one thing that I think is happening is, um, and I'll, I'm going to get a little partisan here, and so you beg my pardon on that. But um, is I think that when you get a party that's so lopsidedly in control of things, and they start doing symbolic things, like for instance, we're getting all this legislation that's just anti-Trump legislation. It's just Trump grunt legislation. So they like they're they're um, they're doing things like uh, like the, uh, the sanctuary state. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That was that was 30 years ago. They did that, but they kind of beefed up the sanctuary state with that 3464, where they said no state, um, no no law state law, no not, not law enforcement, no state agency. Can um, can um, can no can provide any information to ICE? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you know, except they say unless it's in uh, unless it's uh, in violation unless it's you know they have to follow federal law and all this kind of stuff. So it doesn't really do anything. Right. I mean, it's crappy legislation, whatever. But uh, but it's it, you know it's 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 anti-Trump stuff. They did a bunch of Medicaid stuff. The abortion. Everybody gets an abortion except if you have Providence Health Care then they're not required to provide you with abortion. But guess what? We'll set up this extra fund here to give you an abortion. Out of taxpayer dollars. Out of taxpayer, taxpayer, taxpayer dollars. dollars. Yes. And then and they so do the same thing for so people that's not legally it, here. It, it, it's all million dollars a year. That, that's what so, we on top of right. so, so, um, that we so you have, you have this huge overreach. So get back to Steve's question here. So that's, that's what happens then. Because people don't like that. The voters in general don't like governments just, just symbolically venting. You know, they want, they want, like, I'll go back to Joe Sixpack. He wants good schools. Does he have good schools? No. He wants good roads. Does he have good roads? No. Does he, he wants, uh, is it, do they have good flaggers on the roads? <laughs> we try. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we try. you know, Joe Sixpack wants just, he just wants the, 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 the Joe Sixpack issues. And, and he's not getting them, and he's getting this symbolic stuff. You know, like, oh, we have, like, transgender recognition and all this kind of stuff. And... People are like, I just, I don't need that. I need my roads safe to drive on, and I need my kids to not come back from school being a blabbering dummy, you know. And so, th that's what people care about. And when you, when you say, oh no, we're the Democrats in Salem, and you know what? We don't care about your kids, and we don't care about your roads. We care about Bob, the.
transgender dude or whatever, you know, and, and uh, not to do anything about the drug guy, guy, but yeah, you know, um, go and so jail. And people people say, you know, and so part of our part of the 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 deal is is to point that out. So you're saying the pendulum can swing back? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah and yeah, I think yeah. it is swinging back. It is. Here, here's one thing. So so I know it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it I've is. I've already so, talked to people. Well, Dennis Richardson is. already tells you the pendulum is swinging. Yeah. So I got to tell you, here's here's a thing that's happened, and so this is it's a little bit of a subtle change. But so um, Republicans, conservatives, we've always been kind of against the kind of the non-traditional marriage arrangements and all this kind of stuff. And there's a point at which you say, you know, whatever you do in your own bedroom is mm -hmm. kind of up to you. It's your business. And and, and uh, most people can agree with that, whatever. And Republicans kind of maybe push back on that a little bit past the time that was politically uh, uh, advantageous to do so. Although. I gotta say, I can make a case for that, and so. Um, but but here's what the deal is: is we've gotten past the thing with, you know, you can do what you want in your bedroom, and I'll do what I want in my bedroom, and you leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. Yeah. And most people are okay with that. that yeah. But now we're to the point where I got where um, I get to shower with your 14-year-old daughter, and <laughs> me, the icky, icky, weird man, gets to shower with your 14-year-old daughter. Do you know why I get to do that? Because that's in order for me to be fulfilled. And I'm sorry if that upsets your 14-year-old daughter, because I really don't care about her feelings. I need to be fulfilled, and I need to shower with her, whatever. And pe that's, people are not okay with that. And I have another example, and this is one where we all snicker at and we all laugh at, but it's kind of a serious example, and that's the gender pronouns, where, where, we, where we say, oh, no, I'm, don't call me he and don't call me she. Call me G or Z or whatever or something like that. And we, we snicker at that. But what's really going on there is to say, you don't get to talk the way that you want. You have to talk that in a way that will fulfill me. It's, so it's about me, the transgender guy. I have more rights than you. As a matter of fact, my rights extend into your mouth and the way you make sounds. And there, there's something seriously your wrong about that. Your rights extend to my business if I want to make a cake. So now I'm going to go I back to, to, to your way. point there. People, people are like... Yeah, 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 I don't care. This is Joe Sixpack again, and he's the guy who really runs Oregon. He's saying, yeah, I don't care if you sleep with this guy or whatever holes you use or whatever, or something like that. You know, whatever. I don't care what, what goes on as long as it goes on in your own bedroom or something like that. Now now you're showering in front of my 14-year-old daughter, and you're threatening me with some sort of lawsuit or something like that if I don't say G or something, you know, some pronoun to you or something. And so that, so that, that becomes a problem to people, and that's a, that's a, a bad deal. And then I gotta say too is the first things first. What you need to do is you need to do effective administration of the state of Oregon, and that's run the schools effectively, run the roads effectively. The, the kind of kitchen table right. bread and butter right. issues. You have to do that. If you do that, you know what you get to do is you get to do some of your social issue crap here, whatever. And for Democrats, that's some of the uh, homeless, the, the, yeah, the drug or the, issues, or the gay marriage issues, stuff, all kinds of stuff. Another set of those things. As long as you run the state effectively, you can go do some of your social issues there. And so that's what's that's what's really going to happen. And and uh, we're we're very, getting very close to that point. You see, the tipping point too is with the media. The the media, which first of all is kind of a minor player now, but if you look at like the editorial pages, those are they almost always are coming out uh, like against the Democrats. Going y yeesh, really, really, is this what you're really doing? Even written by the Lynch. Yeah. Right now. The, yep. The, the Lynch family school name, the Oregonian, yeah. 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 jumped on that on the side of what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah, they're missing an educational opportunity yeah. is what they're doing. That, that's a, that's, like a that that's, that's, that's a great thing. That's a great example. Yeah, instead yeah. of so educating, we'd rather just make everybody stupid. Those neutral gender words sound almost like they are akin to the Orwellian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah very Orwellian. So we, we have a, like a, another thing, too, of a, um, one thing, like, when people think of, the, again, let's go back to Joe Sixpack, and you think of like unions and the workers and stuff like that, you think, ah, it's the worker. He's working hard. He's out there producing things and all kinds of workers and all kinds of stuff. And, and so there's this kind of thing of like, yeah, the unions are okay on it. Well, now you get things, so now you get, oh, well, there's these public employee unions. 20% yeah, increase this year. Yeah, and they, every get, other year. they get this thing, and they get, uh, they get uh, this, this uh, health plan that nobody else would ever get or anything like that. Not even public workers in other states. And, uh, and so it gets to be kind of an issue. Things. And, uh, so, um, and so now we get to the point where, and, and so like um, union workers make up about 11% of the workers in the state of Oregon. That might be public employee unions. Or, but, but, uh, 
but uh, but um, that um, that's certainly not any kind of decisive voting block or anything like that. But they run the state, and so uh, so people are gonna people get sick of that after a while, and that's that's when things start to change or whatever. So, well, you know, and not public employee unions because I can't talk for them. Uh, I am a member of a union. I'm an electrician. Yeah. But the amazing thing to me is with IBEW uh, Local 280, which is basically mm -hmm. this side of Portland, and it would, doesn't go up into Portland, but it's the valley, the main valley in Eugene area. I would say 90 to 95% of my other union brothers, <laughs> they didn't vote for. They're, they, they voted Trump. Oh yeah. They're, right. they're conservative, you know, gun toting hunters and fishermen and everything else. And the sad part is that the you wouldn't know that you go talk to the local union hall. My, uh, my yeah, son. And, and son. They're, those people are voted in by the electricians. But the problem is, just like what's happened with our voters, most of the people. They're just like, I don't want to go to the meetings. I don't want to vote. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to back up 100% of what you just said. My son, uh, he, uh, he got sued for building some condos over in Florence. And because 11 years after he built them, they hadn't painted them, and the window sills rotted. And uh, so his after his insurance got through raping him and, and everything, he said, I've had enough. So he went to work for the union. The first thing they did was send him up to the condo dam and stuck him up there for two years while they dismantled it. But uh, he's, he was a 100% union. Every man on his crew was 100% union. He finally had enough of that. And he went to work in the state of Oregon. He's now the head yeah. maintenance person at the mental hospital now mm -hmm. over here in Salem. But he's back in the union again. He's not high enough up supervisory ladder to be exempt from the union. Mm -hmm. So he's in union again. But he's in, we just talked about this not two months ago. 100% of his crew are hard-ass, dyed-in-the-wool yeah. Republicans. It's, it's amazing. And the same lot. thing up there. And, mm -hmm. and when I go to the, the mills, I've, I've been in the union, several different unions. I don't remember any liberals in any union I've ever been in, no. yeah. except for the, the top levels. The right. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem is, is our money, yeah. and, they're, and, uh, right. and they're spending our money, or your money in this case, I found a way to quit paying taxes in union dues. I don't make any money anymore. <laughs> uh, they're taking your money, or in the state's case, when we pay these state employees, their, their union dues are going to pass bills that yeah. those employees may not support. Well, well and that's, that's wrong. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the problem is, outside of the public employee union, is I don't know how that would work, but like our union, <coughs> we, we vote in the leaders of the union Every, you know, every couple of years. Yeah. And the problem is that the, the, they won't get off their butts and vote to change it's their job security coming from a national level. Well, once the fake trough is going to yeah, well, is that? Like But that's the problem. The is, is I talked to, talk to the guys that have in charge, and I'm like, why are you guys, why did you guys give money to Kitzhopper for his reelection campaign? We knew he was a criminal. Well, we do what's good with the worker for the workers. How is him being in charge saying no gas terminal, no CNG plant, all these big jobs? And well, I would love to work out. Need labor. I need, could use the money. You know, and you guys are shutting them down. How's that good for the worker? And, and they, they, they won't. They can't the, answer you. The law insurance worker and warehouse right. union. Yeah. What happened? But with terminal six. Yeah. It, terminal it, six. Yeah. yeah. They're still shut down. down. Billions of dollars a year in 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 commerce. commerce there. And you know things like like that impacts that my impacts district. the highway twenty three yeah. really. yeah. yeah. in Dallas. It's yeah. really yeah. on the I five corridor. It's yeah. we're seeing what you see the traffic pick up as they shut down. Traffic is getting yeah. Uh, it's hard to that benefit. Wait till they put a toll bridge. Toll bridge. Right. right. That's good. That was insane. Uh, I, I will not got a toll bridge. I have to do my business. I know. I know. I know. Wants to build a toll bridge. Going all the way down the road. Yeah. I got. I read for until they open that terminal back up. The problem is you got very involved. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they sent home for business to Tacoma. Yeah. 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 But anyway, he, uh, and we're.